two. Welcome, everybody, to the H3 Podcast. Um, this is where we come to learn and grow. You know, we are casting off negative energies and embracing the positive energies that are in the world, like a dream catcher for life. That's what I'm calling the H3 Podcast now. Neg- good vibes only. Right, Ela? Why are, you, why are you so offended at the thought of good vibes? A dream catcher? Yeah, dream catchers, they, they catch bad dreams. So you only have good dreams. So I have a dream catcher for good vibes. What? I, I never liked good. those. Yeah, I don't like them either, to be honest. Today's episode is sponsored by ExpressVPN. God bless them. And just a quick announcement that Teddy Fresh x SpongeBob, the collaboration that took the universe by storm, is back online at teddyfresh.com. Today we are joined by the, I I tend to say prolific, but you're definitely not prolific. But you are, you do what you do is great. Although there's not I, many I, of it. I think you're getting a lot better with those intros. Well, thank you very uh, much. <laughs> great is better than prolific, I think. Last time you said something about, uh, I think, Luke Skywalker or something like that at some point. <laughs> that sounds uh, about right. I think, I think great is, just, I'll take that. Just simple <laughs> and to the point. With us, of course, is iDubs, who has, um, a man, um, among many other videos, but today has released his second feature-length documentary called The Ice Cream Man about... Know the... Oh, know the... Ice Cream Man. You're not saying anything. You, you, you know, you had a problem with uh, Oliver Tree last time where you were wanting to overstate words for his, like, song. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a habit of yours. The? <laughs> yeah. Um, what was the name of the song that you were trying to change? You were trying oh. to tell him, tell him, don't yeah. let me down. Yeah. 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 You're right. Maybe the... You, 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 <laughs> yeah. you artistic types like to reduce the, the, the words. Yeah. It just flows off the tongue a little bit better. Ice Cream Man is the name of his new video out right now about the... Hmm. The... Uh, Dax Flame. How would you describe Dax Flame, Ian? You know him better than I. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> he's a little bit socially awkward, but also not. Uh, I think he's a bit of an oxymoron. A lot of the comments that I'm seeing is like, whoa, he's so introverted, but also he's really extroverted. What's the deal with that? Mm-hmm. So I think that's a pretty good way to sum him up. Like, Interesting. You know, he's an actor, he's an artist, he's a comedian. So he's like doing all these very like, you know, outgoing activities and, uh, you know, but that clashes, I think, with his sort of more natural personality, which is he's a guy who's just a little bit shy, a little bit awkward. But yeah. Um, When you sent me the unlisted link, I immediately noted, I was like, dude, you have copyrighted music in here. What's the deal with that? Are you crazy? Like, what? Are you crazy? And you told me you had actually gone to a publishing company and licensed the music for quite a bit of money, I would say, you know, for for a song and a YouTube video. But you were having technical issues yesterday when the video was supposed to go up. Was it related to that? Yes, it was. (laughs) It was... (laughs) It was, I, I don't know, everyone has the, has, every YouTuber has the problem with, like, specifically audio, more specifically music, getting copyrighted, and, like, it just felt like a good opportunity to experiment to see if it's, like, a, like, a something that we can do in the future, mm. Uh, mm. you know, if it's not too much money. It's sort of hard if you ask the average person, how much do you think it costs to license a, a piece of music, like, I don't think anyone could really even ballpark what it is because it's so subjective. Like, are you a person with money? Cause then who knows how like infinite the amount they could charge you would go. But I, you know, it seemed pretty reason, pretty reasonable at the start, but then things got more and more complicated and we realized that it's just like this time it wasn't worth the effort. We went through a lot of the effort, but in the end we just replaced it with like, just some royalty free crap. Wait, you did? Yeah. Oh, no way. Yeah. <laughs> it, originally, we were going to use uh, California Dream, and we were like, oh, this is the perfect yeah. song for the intro. Really artistic, really nice. Um, but it's like, it's such a fucking web 
of oh. like who owns what. There's going to be like maybe 10 different people who own the rights to a single song. And a single song is, is broken up into different categories. Maybe it's uh, the lyrical portion, the master license, the instrumental, all these different things. So it's just, it's a lot harder than you'd think. I think it's a much better idea if you're trying to use good music on YouTube to just contact an artist directly and uh, and use their work or try to get permission. Are you comfortable saying how much you, you were prepared to pay for these songs? Yeah, so for California Dreamin', like it was, it's a fucking good song, super popular. I mean, yeah. I would have been willing to pay probably up to 15 grand wow. on it. Wow. Uh, but again, it's it, it's all relative, right? So like, did you you never got a for price? how long? No, they 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 never even really like responded. <laughs> oh, so that's why you yeah. know movies and TV shows and all these big networks they have like whole departments just for right. actually licensing. It's to, it's then, a fucking nightmare. You yeah. can't do anything. But then ultimately, what what will happen is like you ended up paying to license a song, or you were planning to, and yeah. then they claimed your fucking. Video. Right, right. So we, <laughs> what we had to do is we had to nix the California Dreaming idea. So we went to uh, sort of a, a a song that they were confident they had the rights to use, um, and it wasn't as good. But we were like, this is a good experiment. We upload the video, instantly claimed. Yes. I kept hounding them beforehand, like, is this going to get claimed? If it gets claimed, I need it to disappear real quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they just like. It's this weird divide where it's like, it seems like it's uh, like old Hollywood and a bunch of fucking oh. antiquated people mm. who get the licensing rights to these songs. Mm. But YouTube is, you know, so, so new and fresh that they're, they're clueless on how to like navigate, yeah. how to get rid of a claim or anything like right. that. And mm -hmm. it's like a week long process. Well, the, the truth is that guy who's licensing it probably doesn't even know the guy on the left hand who's in a claim farm somewhere in India or, where, or wherever. It yeah, could be in the world. <laughs> claim farm. You know what I mean? That's a good way of putting it. Yeah, yeah, that's what they are. They're straight up claim farms. <laughs> they have bounties on channels. Like I've I've literally heard this from people inside YouTube. There, there are claim farms where people are paid bounties to watch channels and find any copyrighted music in it. And so they get a commission <laughs> on every video they're able to claim. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. It's crazy. So there you go. Well, it was worth a shot, but um, <clears throat> on that note, though, I also noticed just in general the production quality seemed really well made. I like talk over your mic. Um. Okay. Well, pe yeah. I want people to <laughs> hear you. Um. <laughs> 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 we yeah. we got an extra cameraman this time. Uh, my buddy Ben was uh, doing a lot of uh, secondary filming, so we we're just trying to. It looked I don't really know, good. See I like that. Stuff yeah, it was yeah. great. It was very Thanks. polished. Yeah. Is this a new interest of yours, the documentary? Because I've noticed they're basically, and correct me if I'm wrong, it seems that you've pivot, pivoted Pivot. away from the content cop and towards the document, the docu series. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm getting old. <laughs> I, I, you're not. I feel that. <laughs> my, my interests are changing just a little bit. Yes. I'm not going to say that. Content cops gone, I, but content maybe there are some things gone. in the work. Oh, yeah. interesting. But it's not about me, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I've been recommended from quite a few people. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would have been a good one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> would you do content cop on cops? Oh shit, that's crazy, <laughs> dude. What a crazy idea. <laughs> uh, you should put on the content cop uniform and go to a police station and fuck with them, dude. That would be fun. Yeah. I like that idea. Um so there is a content cop that you are maybe working on or mulling well, around. Well, I'm not gonna say that because it's not I mean it's definitely just like you have people in the crosshair. No, no, no. No. You didn't even have a specific... It's, I, I think in general, it's more ideas in the crosshair rather than people. Mm. Um, so let me ask you. Or institutions, perhaps. Oh, the police? 
<laughs> oh, no, find- I'm not content copying the police. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah, I do like the idea of going to the precinct and whipping my dick out. I think of you something. might get killed if you show up in a <laughs> uniform and start fucking with them. I think there's a high chance of being murdered. Um, well, I do find the co- the comment you made about you getting older and your interest changing is interesting because I've kind of gone through the same thing where you know. From my from my perspective, you have you know, it, when you're constantly like looking for people to go after, and um, you know you're constantly criticizing people for all this and that. I mean, you know, as you get older, these things start to become a little more trivial, and maybe it's not the kind of energy you want to be putting out into the world. Is that is that kind of where you're at when you say that? Uh, for sure, it it comes across as, especially when you give it more time to to sit on it and uh yeah i just i don't know it's i it, it it really isn't let's put it this way it really isn't difficult to make a commentary video anyone mm-hmm. can sit down and criticize someone else and i think it just like it's <laughs> it's becoming a little tired for me uh mm-hmm. if if other people want to do it i think there's a place for it but it's just becoming you know, I've done enough of it. I think, uh, it, you know, if I do more, I think it just needs to have a little bit more of a purpose or a point behind it rather than just, you know, let's make fun of this guy yeah. for his lack of a chin. You know? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I feel that. Um, <laughs> no, I went through the same thing. You know, it's like the the format itself has become, first of all, so prevalent on YouTube that, uh, it's really, you know, it's like by the time, yeah, that's how I feel too. I don't know how, yeah. how better to put it. Yeah. But but on the contrast of the content cop, I feel like the docu series is almost the antithesis of the content cop. But instead of, you know, criticizing people, you are finding people who uh, kind of, you know, living in the shadows of YouTube a little bit and and rising them up. Do you feel that that is maybe the the are you intentionally trying to do something like that with your docuseries? Yeah. I, I don't think there's uh, any, I'm not like actively choosing to like be less negative or, uh, you know, bring people up. I don't think it's an active choice, but it's like, I think by nature, when you go and meet people, uh, you form a connection and things in general are just going to be a lot more positive mm-hmm. when you actually have a connection with someone a uh, so personal true. connection you meet them you know and that's i think that's in general why a lot of you know uh commentary videos will come out and blow up is because it's uh, it's you know if if i <laughs> i'm certain if i you know met some of the people that i've made videos on in the past if i met them in person first there would probably be sort of a diminishing motivation to make a video about them Mm -hmm. because you're not going to see this weird persona that they put out there. You're going to see something a little bit more real, something a little bit more human. Mm -hmm. A little more complex. Yeah. You know, these, these two characters, like you did, your first one was on Airsoft Fatty and your second one now is on Dax Flame. I mean, these are dudes who probably catch a lot of shit on the internet from people who don't understand them right so i find it interesting that um you know you're going out there and meeting them and then all of a sudden these guys are portrayed as these celebrated great you know very very sweet individuals and i wonder if uh yeah it feels very fresh it feels very different from what's on the youtube landscape so i appreciate that you know that perspective yeah thank you i yeah we they definitely have you know their own like set of fans and everything i think like with with dax as an example like i definitely went into it because when you're when you're creating one of these videos you sort of want to have a goal you don't really want to go into it blind because it's like well what do we make Mm. this video about Mm -hmm. like you can't just follow someone around and be like yeah, do your normal routine. You got to have like an event or a purpose. Um, so like with people like Dax, I think I went into it thinking, 
yeah, this guy's awkward. Let's fuck it. Let's fuck with him. You know, there's, there's a few awkward questions that I don't think made the cut. It was just me trying to poke and pry thinking like, he's awkward. Let me ask him some uncomfortable questions to make it even weirder. Mm -hmm. But then I realized like as time went on, like that's like the opposite approach that you should be taking. You should be, I think, feeding into what the particular person is comfortable with because when they're more comfortable, they're a lot more willing to like put themselves out there and express themselves in an interesting way rather than just like, you know, beating your head against a wall, trying mm -hmm. to make, the funny thing happened. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Right. <clears throat> How's everything with um, your girlfriend, Anissa, now that COVID has slammed the world? She's stuck yeah. in Canada. It's crazy that here in America, we, are, we have failed to contain the virus to the point where Canada has closed the border <laughs> on plague-ridden America. <laughs> and so your girlfriend is stuck in Canada, right? Is that the current situation? Yeah. And let me just say the Canadians better be very scared because I'm coming up with a 250 page uh, common law marriage dossier to present to the customs <laughs> officials so that I could go to Canada. Really? You're going to present it yes. just to border control? Yep. And, and they're going <laughs> to let me through and I'm going to bring the COVID with me. Oh. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fuck them. <laughs> Sorry, Canada. You're are, screwed. Are you being careful? How how are you existing in the COVID world? Um, What's your opinion on all this ma nonsense, madness? You know me, man. Anti-masker all the way. Yeah. No, not actually. <laughs> yeah, I know that. You make that clear. Not <laughs> oh, at all, even remotely. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's very easy. I, I talked to uh, um, the my, my friend Dane, who... Uh, filmed the documentary and edited it. He uh, he was saying how it feels very normal to him this COVID stuff because he doesn't get out of the house all that often anyway. <laughs> so it's kind of ridiculous hearing some people like complaining about not being able to go see friends and go to the bar. And he's like, "What the hell?" And I feel kind of the same. It's like, yeah. what wh what am I leaving the house for anyway? Do you go grocery shopping? Yeah. So you put on a mask when you go to the grocery store. Oh yeah, I'm all how, in that ninety five up. How par <laughs> how paranoid do you feel when you're at the grocery store on a scale of one to ten? Paranoid? Yeah. I mean maybe a three. A three? Yeah. That seems a yeah. healthy amount of paranoia. I, I think it's mainly like the touching things because mm -hmm. you can get really into this OCD mentality of right. like right, where it's like, okay, there's the carts, there's the credit card reader, there's mm -hmm. all these items and objects to touch on the shelves. So it's like it, you can kind of overthink it. There's like a lot of like viral things of like plastic over a, key, a credit card keypad or something. And it's like, what's the point of putting the plastic on there? You're just still touching it and other people are touching it. So it's like, I think it's that idea where it's like, well, yeah, what isn't being touched? Do you carry around hand sanitizer with you? Uh, I did for a while. I ran out recently and yeah. I just assumed <laughs> that. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to be able to find more. I bought. I actually found some on we Amazon. We just found some. I think it just became available on Amazon. Yeah, I, I think they're using some real shit smelling uh, <laughs> hand sanitizer now, though. They're using like I got something really other than isopropyl alcohol. <laughs> oh, for real? <laughs> we got yeah, one. And it smells a little funky. We got one that's super thick. And it's like yeah. oh, I really from, gross. I, I was uh, at the gas station. <laughs> I don't know what's in it. Well, because I went to the gas station. I went to the clerk. I was like, hey, do you guys have sanitizer? Expecting him to say no because this was like peak madness. And he goes, yeah, I got this. And he reaches behind the counter and he just gives me like what looks like a bottle of sunscreen. Clear. A label that's in Spanish. <laughs> and then, but there's no, you can't like turn it over and squeeze it. It's like got a top like a like a bottle of water <laughs> and a huge so you gotta so you take, just gotta you go, like pfft. squeeze a ton of it out i would have never expected like bootleg sanitizer yeah like dude i was like fuck it i was like you know what but whenever I'll i use it, it there's like a really thick layer on my hands that does not go away yeah i don't and think that's the real deal in fact i'd be surprised <laughs> if it kills the virus fuck. some dude probably jizzed uh, and mixed yeah, it with, that's what... with uh gelatin or some shit <laughs> No, but you oh, know, I went God. on Amazon. You're like recently. rubbing around like protein in your hands. <laughs> Sick. I'm like, hmm. Sounds like uh, dried semen. <laughs> um, but I did go on Amazon, you know, and we bought 
I think we got ripped off. I think they're upselling a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Amazon's like, you can't charge times 20. You can only charge, charge times three. So we ended up spending like $200 on like a crate of hand sanitizer. But um, it smells great. They made it with alloy. So there you have it, people. Alloy. <laughs> yeah, alloy. It smells great. No, uh, no, not alloy. <laughs> Allo? Allo? Is that how Allo. it is? Allo. It is Allo. A-L-O-E? It's pronounced Allo? Yeah. Oh, that doesn't sound right. But yeah. I know I could spell it. A-L-O-E. That is it. Allo. English is your first language, Ethan. Wow. <laughs> Supposedly. Some people say my first language is um, comedy. <laughs> yeah, I've told people that. Yeah, my first language is comedy. Well, <clears throat> how how are your fans reacting to kind of, I think a lot of the, you know, your rise to fame was during your time the content cops were like uh, res, I would, not rise to fame but like a lot of growth yeah uh during that time that's fair so are you experiencing any kind of kickback from fans who are like fuck documentaries and fe- and good vibes i want to, i dubs shitting on people you get that <laughs> <laughs> uh no like it's one of those things where it's like I think it's pretty, I think the, the simp debacle has really helped that where it's like, I'm, I'm purging sort of mm-hmm. inadvertently a portion of my audience that really wants to see me go for the, the throat, you know, mm-hmm. um, content cop your own girlfriend, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Can you, can you explain the simp phenomenon? Explain it. <laughs> I mean, I, I can tell you that it was like my video was. Uh, either really well timed or really poorly timed. I don't depending on your perspective. <laughs> or I, I mean, uh, I'm more specifically, why are people calling you a simp? <laughs> I mean, I, well, the do back, you the, want me? To, I, I'm pretty sure you you we've you, talked uh, about it. Understand? I'm just why? Try, well, it's because well, my girlfriend is selling recap? nudes yeah, on just, the internet. Yeah, I just wanted to set <laughs> it up for the audience. Obviously, yeah, yeah. I know why. I mean, we've also talked about it. Well, okay, by the so, way, guys, I want to make it clear. Ian's... I'm not upset with Ethan right now. <laughs> yeah. Why this are we is fighting? friendly banter. Okay. You, okay. You just, you just prevented Wait, like five gonna, yeah. videos. <laughs> I, I know. I know. Guys. I got to fucking <laughs> yeah. put out the fires before they fucking start. Thank you, Ian. I appreciate that. Yeah. No, people are fucking stupid. We just spawned uh, 20 video essays. Um, yeah. No, Ian's girlfriend made an OnlyFans, which is, I guess, does she even do nudes on OnlyFans? It's more like, more no, like. No, no, it's, it's I like mean, the, the reason. Sexy that, photos. Sexy photos, yeah. I guess. Right. It's, it's super easy to justify when you're like, yeah, like, <laughs> this is the shit girls are doing on Instagram and no one's whining and bitching and moaning over that. Yeah. But as soon as you start taking people's money for that content, it's like, oh, that's. That's too much. Mm -hmm. I expect girls to show me their junk for free. Yeah. (laughs) Or a bit. No, actually. So it does seem to me that a lot of people who are criticizing it are are people who, you know, are just happy to find an opening to criticize you. Because for the longest time, I feel like, you know, there was never really a chink in your armor and that you were always very careful with your uh, why are you smiling? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no reason. I, I well, I mean, I'm smiling because I I agree. Yeah, yeah. But I think like the, there's like these com- these commentary people, right? Who are just looking for content. They're like piranhas anywhere they can get it. And then all of a sudden, you see an opening on like uh, Idubs, who's kind of the the great uh, criticizer who who is beyond criticism. And then all of a sudden, it's a great headline. I don't think anyone's actually offended by the fact that your girlfriend it has an OnlyFans. I think that it's just they see an opportunity for a for a video. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. I mean, it, and it kind of shows in like the I think the the people in general who who did get upset or did make videos about it. It's kind of like uh, I don't know, like the people who are like actually critical of it. Like they're not really in a mainstream sphere. They have their you know. Uh, soapbox that they're speaking on to their particular audience. But I think it's 
it's actually super positive that it ended up this way because I think for a long time when I'd have a, uh, you know, first interaction with someone, meeting someone for the first time, I think a lot of people sort of expected me to like immediately roast them, you know, do a content <laughs> cop on them. People just being nervous, like, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. what are, you know, they see me in the videos being an asshole. And it's like, that must be him in He's real taking life. taking notes on me. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it's it really is a positive thing to to I guess in a way take this hit to I make it me humanizes you know you, maybe yeah exactly it humanizes me and makes people real realize that you know I'm just like them you know I'm not <laughs> it's I'm pretty not any funny because you're actually like kind of the opposite of that in person. Like I think Ian's a softy. You're a really nice person. In, in, yeah. You know? But so I, I, it's kind I of would funny say that, that that's what the it, image they have of you, you know? Right. It's like, especially with the videos that got popular, it's like I genuinely, you know, got fucking roid raged when talking about like Keemstar or whoever else because, <laughs> you know, it, it made me net mad. And, you know, when you see, I think, people who have that, uh, uh, who, who, who that's like their main form of content is like just kind of dogging other people or they got, you know, well known for it. That definitely, I think, solidifies what you think their personality mm. is. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. You know, it's funny when we went to create our YouTube's creator summit where they invite a bunch of creators out to New York. That was a while. How long ago was that? A few years. Probably um, almost four years or three. Four? I don't know. I might, I might be making it yeah, up. Yeah, maybe you're right. Anyway, I went out there and met a bunch of creators, and we never re really rubbed shoulders with creators before. And I heard this so many times the whole time. They're like, you're so not what I expected. <laughs> right. I'm like, dude, I'm not, like, on. I'm not here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I heard that all the time. And I find it, like, I'm just surprised how many people are even comfortable saying that. Mm-hmm. I think it's just their gut reaction. It's just, I, but it just yeah. overwhelms them every time they see me that I'm just not what they expected. Not anymore, though, right? Like that—that that was probably. Well, I don't meet. I, I don't meet anybody anymore. But I don't think any people wouldn't say that about me now. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's the yeah. same effect as Ian <clears throat> yeah. with the content cups, because at the time we were doing mostly reaction videos. Yes. Well, I think. Uh, uh, in the documentary, Tay Zonde actually made a, a really good point, I think, mm -hmm. about that, where yeah. it's like there's this expectation that you kind of have a bit of a persona. Yeah. And that is very true, I think, for YouTubers, where you can kind of make a video, edit out all the parts that make you look human <laughs> and put it on the Internet. And I think, you know, if any of these YouTubers, if I decided to, you know, live stream tomorrow, or something like that, where you saw a more uncut version of me, mm. um, then you would probably get a you know a more well-rounded idea of the type of person I am, uh, you know, for better or worse. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of what always interests me about the podcast is that for the longest time we had these perfectly manicured videos where you can portray yourself in the best possible light, however you want. You have the best perfect take. You say everything perfectly. But then, like, we did our show live for, like, two years, you know. And for me, that was, such, like, the biggest challenge imaginable to move from these perfectly manicured videos to doing a live stream for two hours. Mm -hmm. And to me, I personally thought that, you know, I was being more authentic and expressing my true authentic self. But... um I think it's a little bit tragic that, um, you know, when you attempt to do that, you... You remove some of the context that you can maybe add in in a post-production or yeah. anything else. Mm -hmm. but there's like, a, you can do a lot. <clears throat> people, right. people don't... For some reason, people don't give the benefit of the doubt in this case where, like, I think for a lot of people, they just... They sift... A lot of people sift through the content looking for, you know, to make a thesis about me. And yeah, it was just, it, I don't know. In the end, it was, it was just, it may, it may be too vulnerable, I guess. I don't know what to say because a lot of people started hating me, I feel like, since we started doing the podcast live. Like, just specifically the live aspect of mm -hmm. it. 
you know, and there's there are definitely times when I would look back and be like, oh, I wish I could have edited that and said it and reshot it or right. done that differently. But, you know, that's kind of the nature of the beast, right? So I don't know. I don't regret it, but uh, I'm kind of glad it's not live anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Because yeah, I absolutely. I just said the N word like twenty times when I was super angry. <laughs> but we cut that out. <clears throat> right. That comment in your documentary was the one that really stood out to me about how it's it's funny to think that in the beginning of YouTube it was even more extreme where people would be completely disappointed to find out that you're different in person. Mm -hmm. And that, like, what's portrayed in the video is not exactly 100% what's what you are in yeah. real life. Where, like, today, they people expect it more. They have a better understanding. They of, assume like, it. Yeah. Like, For sure. It, like, you, the video version of you is probably a little more exaggerated and mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, I thought um, that was a very interesting. Yeah, it was interesting, ex especially in regards to Dax Flame, because of how he's such an, a mystery. Yeah, they uh, they definitely have that. Like it's 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 interesting to know that they do that to like like you guys are I think pretty protected by like or you know all YouTubers are protected by being able to edit their videos and whatnot and be able to portray what they're putting out there. But to think that there is this section of Hollywood, K-pop stars, musicians, whoever. They have it to the nth degree where they have like agents and PR people mm -hmm. actively like editing their life mm. yeah. as their life is happening, which is just super fucking. They have real so handlers. Weird. I mean, look yeah. at someone like Tom Cruise, right? <laughs> that dude has like 20 handlers with him at all times. <laughs> yeah. I just saw this one uh, of <laughs> fucking Gordon Ramsay like going off on Sofia Vergara on like a late night show. He was like poking her and doing a lot of like sexual innuendo shit. Really? And it was like, holy fuck. Like, I, I can't believe that he, he, I guess, got this far. Like, since then, I guess his personality has been reeled in. All right. Let's go to a quick break. And uh, we will be right back with the not prolific, but excellent. He's very <laughs> nice. I mean, very nice individual. <laughs> very interesting as well. Hi, Dubs. Have you ever watched The Office? If you have, you probably know it's based on a UK series also called The Office. But what if I told you there are nine other countries with their own version of The Office that you've never seen? I'd be shocked. Well, you probably didn't know about them because they're not usually available in your country. But you can access content available around the world with no geo restriction when you use ExpressVPN. That is crazy. I didn't know that there was all these episodes or these other shoot-offs of The Office. That's amazing. ExpressVPN lets you control where you want sites to think you're located. You can choose from nearly 100 different countries, giving you access to content that isn't available in your region. If you like watching shows or movies, ExpressVPN is a must-have. For less than $7 a month, ExpressVPN lets you access thousands of new shows, movies on Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney+, Plus, and tons of other streaming services. It's a no-brainer. And look, I know you all got tons of time on your hand with COVID. You're stuck at home. You've already watched everything on Netflix. See what's on in Netflix, uh, Japan, for example. You know? And it couldn't be easier to use. Just fire up the ExpressVPN app on your computer or TV, select a location, and hit connect. ExpressVPN is also incredibly fast. It doesn't slow down your connection. You can stream content in HD quality mwah, with no issues at all. So get the most out of your streaming services today at expressvpn.com slash h3. If you use our link, you'll get an extra three months free of ExpressVPN. Again, that's expressvpn.com slash h3. expressvpn.com slash h3. Please support our sponsors. Thank you to ExpressVPN. God bless. Teddy Fresh X SpongeBob SquarePants is back by popular demand. It is now live on our website at teddyfresh.com. We've got the old and the new, this classic uh, Teddy Fresh 
SpongeBob hoodie is back. And we've got new colors as well, an aqua and shady cove. Look at this beautiful embroidery here. Gorgeous. Oh, my goodness. Oh, 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 oh. You love it. You love it. You love it. That's the hoodie. Let's go back. You've also got the uh, embroidered hoodie, which is classic. You know, you can't go wrong with that. And all these beautiful colors. You've got purple, crystal, waters, coral. Mm. All water-themed names, of course, because you know how we do it. This is a really beautiful item. The shirt quality is amazing. You've got the Teddy Fresh Friends, SpongeBob Plus. We need to name our bear, Ela. Don't do you think we need to name our Teddy Fresh bear? I never thought about that. What's his name? I wonder. Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a bear. Oh, I just got claimed. Uh. Uh, we got the embroidered tee. We got the patch tee. Forget it, forget it. We got the long sleeves, the beanie, the hat. You know the drill. Um, really great items. Exclusively at teddyfresh.com. That's it, guys. Uh, thank you for watching. Let's get right back into it. We are back with iDubs. iDubs, let me ask you something. Um... The whole simp thing was like the first time you were on the receiving end of catching shit on the internet. How did it feel to kind of be on that end of the uh, the old shit gun? <laughs> it it hurt. It hurt me. It's the worst, isn't it? Well, I think you're yeah. being sarcastic, but did uh, it? No, no, I'm not, not being yeah. sarcastic. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's part of the problem yeah. is w without this, people would just think I'm I'm above it and all that. No, it hurt. I'm human. It hurt me, it hurt my feelings to hear people say things like simp, cuck, motherfucker. <laughs> well, it's not so much the what they say. It's like just the net, the the scope of negativity aimed at you, you 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 feel that, you know? You, mm -hmm. you you can't just dodge. And also I can't I can only mm. imagine that as a couple too, it must be mm. difficult to both get it and then as a couple, you know, it's like a lot. I'm certain you guys, yeah, would understand it. it I think it's brought us like a lot closer together because it's like we're in this together. Yeah. You know, when when shit hits the fan, it's like Yeah. You don't really have anyone to rely on. You're not going to get fulfillment by reading comments. You're no. going to get it by <laughs> so. from each other. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's only strength in the relationship um, apart from her being in Canada right now. But uh, it's it's overall a good thing. You know, it's not uh, it's not negative. I think everyone needs to every content creator needs to experience some of this during their career mm -hmm. because it's important. It gives you perspective on what it feels like, whether or not you want to engage in it when it mm -hmm. happens. You know, if, if someone's getting dogged on, like you're going to, you're going to think twice if you've experienced it before. Mm -hmm. So it's important, I think for everyone to get a taste of it. I'm perfect. I'm, I'm more than happy that this was my controversy. Well, you didn't really do anything. That was kind of the thing that stumped <laughs> right, me the right. most. <laughs> Which is why I'm like, I'm I'm cool with it. Like, you know? I, I was kind of, I, I won't say I was shocked that it became a thing because knowing the internet, I wasn't surprised. But people somehow found a way to make it seem like you did something wrong when you literally did nothing. Mm -hmm. So I found that whole thing kind of perplexing. It frustrated me. Did you, were you frustrated by it? You're like, what exactly am I being criticized for? Um, I think the only frustrating thing was when people couldn't read between the lines in like previous videos. I think a lot of people would, I made a green screen compil compilation of me basically saying, look at this slut, look at this whore and all this shit. And like people were using that, some people, <laughs> not everyone, were using that as like evidence of me being hypocritical mm. as yeah. if that's even too much of a bad thing. Uh, that's literally everyone. But they were using that as some kind of evidence. And I'm like, that like that was a joke. 
I wasn't like I was saying, <laughs> look at this horror to a green to screen. Nobody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could put yourself or your grandmother up on that green screen. And that's that changes the context yeah. like, or a hot dog, whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's a good point. It's that, just it's- that frustration. I think I think some people also watch like the uh, Tana Moju content cop and thought mm-hmm. like he hates this type of person. <clears throat> so they they're lumping like a general type of person together where it's like. <laughs> the amount of times I've seen like the meme where it was like, you were meant to destroy the simps, not join them. Right. It was like a, like a fucking uh, Star Wars meme. Yeah. I think. yeah. And I'm just like rolling my eyes, like, come mm-hmm. on. Like, it, wh- what is this weird expectation? Like, you I were meant to destroy the no. simps, Ian. You yeah. have lost your way. I don't know. I don't know where <laughs> in the in the charter of the formation of my channel I said <laughs> the purpose is to eliminate thoughts, sluts, and simps. Yeah, I find that interesting. It's almost like they're they're projecting their but this whole thing is like so hateful towards women, isn't it? It's very chauvinistic. And they, they, yeah, and they're just projecting like their incel incel dumb on you. I, yeah, I think the the misunderstanding comes in where like a lot of people think that like what we're saying is that you need to be okay with it. Like you need to be okay with our relationship or whatever. And it's like, no, it's perfectly fine if you don't want that in your relationship. Mm-hmm. But right. like mm. Right. Yeah. That's not what yeah. what's being advocated. It's not saying this should be the new world order. Yeah. <laughs> is right. every person's wife should be on OnlyFans. Right. right. Like I'm okay not... with Ela doing OnlyFans. I think we make a lot of supplementary oh, I thought income a lot. You said you weren't. I'm okay with you being on OnlyFans. <laughs> Who do you think would get more? <laughs> Me or you? Well, as soon as he thought of the dollar signs, he was like, Maybe it's not a terrible idea. I have Ela. <laughs> we need to we can supplement our income. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, well, I mean, actually... that's it, right? It's like in the in the context of most people talking about this, what I've noticed is a lot of people do the sort of like, what would you do in this situation? And right. it's like, it's really not important because it's like- That's not if, even in question. No one is talking about you or your right. relationship. It, that's the whole point. It's like, we're fine with people not doing it. If you, if you value the money more than exposing more of your body to the internet, like then more power to you. That's great. I think that's what Anise and I value. We're like, oh yeah, we're fine with that. And um, I've I've watched Anissa's video about it, about if she regrets it. And I thought it was really interesting that she said it's actually been really good for mm. her, not only financially, which probably has been huge, but um even just for her own like self confidence mm. and like being more just more out there and coming to all. Absolutely. I can tell as if, you know, myself, I have a lot of insecurities, so I Mm -hmm. could understand what she was talking about and it sounds like it was really good for her. So Hmm. that's That's really cool. I think the number one thing that people sort of get wrong when they're talking about it. And I would say it's, it's more likely than not guys or, or uh, not guys, a person who's in a relationship who feels like not fulfilled or like like they're not mm-hmm. contributing their fair share or whatever the mentality is, I think a lot of people don't get that it's but, not it's not always about money. Like yeah. money's nice. That's obviously part of the equation. But yeah. the other part of the equation is I need something. I want something. Anissa's yeah. streaming wasn't going like that well. It's not a fucking rocket ship. She needed to do something else, and that's what she wanted to do. And, yeah. you know, it's I it's more about was... purpose. A lot of people would say, Idubs is a fucking millionaire. He makes right. so much money. Why can't he, like, that's sad. That's sad if if he if he can't just pay for her life. Yeah. Like, what but the fuck? It's so, it's like, that is not what so it's about. missing the point but no, because she wants to be fulfilled and... I totally get that. And um, like in our case, it's different because we started together the YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. But even at a, there was a point before we started Teddy Fresh where Ethan was actually doing most of it. Like he was doing the editing and he was in the videos. 
and it felt like I wasn't pulling my weight. And there was I felt, a comp- yeah, there was friction. I sure. felt so restless and like just not good about myself. And mm. it's like, okay, I'll do the dishes because, you know, I might as well do something, but this is not my calling, you know? And yeah, like, no, totally. Yeah, <laughs> but a lot of people online would want your calling to be doing the dishes. Well, that's what I was going to say is <laughs> it's that so it's the same people who would say, call you a simp. Like they or don't they understand would, that a female but in also, a relationship could couldn't be fulfilled by just being provided. But you know, for, also yeah, what's funny, home, if she home. wasn't like that and she was just fine with using his money, they would call her a gold digger, right? Yeah, that's and true. And then she would be right. that person. I mean, that was happening for you know basically three years of our relationship is people saying that you're just doing this for clout and whatever else, and it's wow. like, if you think she's doing it for clout, you're sorely mistaken because she hasn't seen a fucking ounce of where's the like, clout? Uh, <laughs> yeah, all I has, saw was her only catching those shit. Ton- yeah, yeah, all I saw was her ton catching shit. tons and tons of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are fucking cruel, man. It's probably probably wasn't been easy for her to be your girlfriend because. You know, because for this, the express, you know, fact that people are are looking for ways to criticize you. And I think Mm -hmm. by proxy, a lot of people saw her as an opportunity to get at you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I mean, I've I've seen that over the years. It's just like, yeah, there's nothing with you. Let's attack your girlfriend kind of Mm -hmm. thing. And it's like, I mean, she makes it easy because she live streams and she speaks her mind and shit. You guys would know yep, that. Yeah. Like, well, <laughs> the more, like I, I would be in the same fucking situation guaranteed <laughs> if I had as much uh, content out there online as Anissa does mm-hmm. and everyone would be in the same position. Yeah. Of yeah. Course. Because it's like, you're just putting yourself out there day after day, entertaining people with zero cuts for hours on end. Right. You're going to say stupid shit all the time. And by the way, for you not to contradict yourself over the course of like, let's say we were doing this podcast for over like three, well over maybe even four years now we've been doing it. A lot of those years was live. For, like this whole hip, the hypocrite label is somehow become like. A, it's too much of a throwaway statement. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't it, uh, hold a lot of weight because it's like, yeah, like. It's like the immediate go to okay. No, you don't need <laughs> you don't even need to like um unpack that at all. It's just like no. you're a hypocrite. You that's like the worst insult you can lay <laughs> against somebody on the internet for some reason. Yeah. And how is it possible to not contradict yourself over four years of yeah? Life well, training? even even as I'm having this you know conversation, I'm like I'm thinking back into the past at moments when I called other people hypocrites, and I think one of the moments was in uh, I think this is maybe the only time in the Keemstar Content Cop, mm-hmm. um, and even that makes me like hesitate because to even talk about it right. in a right. m- more mature evolved way right. yeah. because i'm like some fucker's gonna yep. take that shit from that yeah. video and be like uh <laughs> hypocrite it's like yep. what the fuck yep you're absolutely right <laughs> yeah it's, it's, a, it's a absolute minefield <laughs> yeah it is man that's why it's amazing that you've been beyond like beyond uh criticism for so long but mm-hmm. it's you- very fucking easy to be without criticism when you don't share anything about your life and you just You're attack very up. private. That's kind of the only way to do it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, li- <laughs> I could have avoided this whole thing. I could have broken up with my girlfriend. Like, that's what a lot of people suggest, right? Like, oh, don't worry. You could solve this whole thing by just breaking up with her. Can you it's imagine? Like, what <laughs> are what you? What world do are you, you live in? Are you even human? Oh, my God. That, like, I wonder, uh, would they be happy if you made a, a content cop on her when she announced OnlyFans? <laughs> I'm announcing today that I'm breaking up with my ex-girlfriend, Anissa, who is and selling her body. New video in one hour. Content cop <laughs> Anissa. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, my God. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <clears throat> there's a lot of pissed off. There's a lot of pissed off, disenfranchised but, people on the Internet. Yeah. I, I, I do feel hopeful, though, because I think it's just... Uh, it's so a lot of young people or a lot mm-hmm. of people who are still, you know, finding themselves yeah. and figuring it out. You know, I was, you know, making a lot of these content cops when I was basically, you know, 20, 25 years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's like, I mean, that feels pretty late in life. Mm-hmm. But at the age I'm at now, I'm like, yeah, I was sort of an immature kid. And mm-hmm. a lot of the arguments really don't hold up over time. And 
they might even not be, you know, worth making in the first place. It's mm. so I don't know. With with time, all of this is gonna be pretty fucking irrelevant. Yeah, that's for <laughs> sure. That's for sure. I try to I try to bear that in mind as we go through shit, you know, especially on YouTube. You go through so much drama and like everything feels so so has so much gravity. But I mean, the shit that we the the people get upset about on the internet generally is just so so irrelevant in the scope of even five years or even less, like two years, one year. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, well, I'm, I want uh, I want like uh, generations past Zoomer and Millennial to <laughs> to start populating places like Twitter and stuff like that because I feel like right now we just have a very homogenous group on you know the YouTube comment section on Twitter and everything else. So as soon as you start like mm-hmm. populating that with this absolute fucking mass of people who honestly don't give a shit, mm-hmm. uh, I, I think you'd start hearing more uh, well-rounded opinions. I can't wait for that. The, zo- <laughs> the Zoomers are like the younger generation, right? Why are they called Zoomers? They zoom around. Um, they fucking run around. Just, they have the zoomies. <laughs> have you not seen like a dog getting real excited to go to the park? Yeah. Oh, the zoomies, right? Isn't that? <laughs> I thought that was tippy taps. <laughs> Happy feet uh, or some shit. Yeah. So, do you actually know what zoomer means? No. I thought it was just a younger generation, like boomer yeah, zoomer. Well, yeah, exactly. Well, it's Generation Z. Oh, okay. I Combined actually zoomer, I like the zoomers. Boomer, I think. They're they seem like nicer. Like they're all well, in, they're like inclusive and sweet, and they like seems like they like each other more. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But they're also going to be the ones that fucking cancel you. <laughs> right, that's true. Some of the zoomers. I mean, they're they're sweet, and it comes from a good place. It comes they, from good, they are all good intentions. Doing, yeah, what they think is the right thing, and in a lot of cases, it is like morally or whatever. But yeah. it's not using the. Um, I don't know if brevity is the right word, but like it's it's not using the context or the you know. The wisdom. They're lacking a little bit of the wisdom. Mm, you just got can- yourself canceled, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just got zoomed. Fuck. <laughs> I'm going to get zoomed. I'm going to be all over zoomed TikTok. Over They're going to be saying that I'm, they wouldn't call me gay. Zoom they shaming. Say, what would they say? Insensitive? Same. You're just racist? a simp. You are, yeah, they could definitely say all those things about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, what else? I mean, you look great. You've been exercising. You look really good. Yeah. Let's see it. COVID's uh-huh. been treating me well. You've been what kind of workouts you've been doing? <laughs> Lifting a lot of weight. Damn. Wow. I could probably deadlift the whole Klein family. You think so? Hell yeah. I doubt Currently it. Currently deadlifting like <laughs> two uh, twenty five. See, think. you're not. Yeah, you you can't even lift me. <laughs> the whole client family. Well, to be fair, I make up ninety percent of the weight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ninety uh, percent of the client family. Yeah, there you go. So, is the mustache here to stay? Is it a gag? Wow. Is it a goof? Funny well, you why ask. would you ask that? I think it looks good. I don't know. Uh, no, what, what do you, yeah, what do you guys honestly think? Be, be honest. I, like I don't want to hear from everyone. I want to hear from Zach, you. Ian, and Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got this frog in my throat. <laughs> frog? <laughs> Is that not what a frog sounds like? I guess. That's awesome. I don't know. I like the that. Book, they that should be your new it. gag. <laughs> <laughs> I got a frog in my throat. <laughs> I personally think that it suits you. Now, I'm not an advocate for a mustache um, for just anybody, but in the case of your yeah. face, I think it suits you well. I, I think generally I'm not a fan in general, like in my my first uh, connotation of mustache is usually not good, but, but looking at you right now, you look good. <laughs> but you've had the mustache so, for a while, haven't you? Yeah. It's not a new thing. <laughs> no, not too new, but it is controversial. Yeah. Okay. I don't know why. I think there's just been too many creepy <laughs> dads with mustache. Yeah, it's hard to make it. It it needs a comeback. Um right. okay, well he's requested the opinions of the other of the others, so go ahead, guys. Uh, I think it, I, I mean, think it looks good. I've been choosing regrettable facial hair my whole life. There's like a weird <laughs> appeal to it, but it only you only <clears throat> see it in your own head. And then everyone else like I see myself as like Kratos when I have a beard. 
then everyone else is like, "That's why do you have that?" Great. You <laughs> I like your that beard. That is good. Yeah. I think most dudes with beards kind of picture them as themselves as Kratos. Really? I where what is? I that? could never. That he's it's the god of war. Full, it's got to be pretty full though. Yeah. <laughs> Ultimate man, a but warrior god. Oh, that's like what Dan is going for. Hell yeah. Yeah, I don't I, see myself I, as crap. I agree with Ian. I think it's rock star. I think it's badass, and I think you rock it. Zach. <laughs> Thank you, Zach. Wow. Yeah, Zach always has nice things to say. <laughs> Zach's a Zoomer. He always has nice things. Is Zach a Zoomer? I am a Zoomer, yes. So. Zach, yeah. Oh, so Zoomers are the best. Yeah, Zoomers are nice. Wow. <laughs> Just don't so cross there them. there is hope. <laughs> Yeah, there is. We hope. should start doing the Olympics, but divided <laughs> divide people up not by nations, but by like generations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Zoomers have, would be all nice, and the Boomers would be like, you know, when you see the soccer fans and they're drunk and fighting and they're flying <laughs> Confederate flags and shit. And they won't be like team players too. No, it's bad over there in Boomer Town. Yeah. Do you guys think we should? Uh, oh, Dan, what do you think of it? I think it looks good. I, I, I've i noticed, uh, I don't know if you're the trendsetter here, but it, it's becoming, uh, I feel like mustaches are coming back. Mm-hmm. I see a lot of people with them. Yeah. And just in the last, like, I would say two years, it seems to, it, there's yeah. a big mustache comeback. Mark Rubio. I think you're right. I think it's a group think kind of thing. No, Everyone's arriving I think you could take full credit time. for right. it. Mar- Mark Rubier <laughs> has one. Uh, Gus Gus Johnson and Eddie. Right. Yeah. Those yeah. two guys are both rocking the stash these days. Yeah. It's, it's kind of. Great mustache. It's making Great a comeback. Mustache. Yeah. You know what would make it look better is if you go back to the Beats headphone haircut with the mustache. Ian, what happened with the Beats headphone haircut? That never, I was assuming that was some part of some project. No, I just got the the Beats because I thought this would be a banger uh, tweet. (laughs) Oh, dude, I was hoping that'd be in a video or something, man. It was in a video, but just sort of as an aside. Uh, It was pretty good, man. Who did that? Just some barber. <laughs> you just went and they were like, I'm up for that? Because when I generally just show up at barbers, they're not that good. Yeah. I mean, I, I told them what I wanted and it was super fucking awkward. Like, he he was like the new guy kind of thing. And like, I think he thought his barber homies were like pranking him mm-hmm. uh. <laughs> or whatever. Barber uh, pranks. Because, yeah, it, it was just me, and I showed him this picture of the, the Beats haircut, and I was just like, uh, give me this, or whatever the meme saying is. Um, and uh, he did it. He he. I think he used, like, a – he pulled, like, the top of, like, a spray can or, a, like, a hairspray cap to make the uh, the headphone part. So he was, like, shaking Dude, around. That's really good. That's yeah. bro. He, he pulled out all the stops. Did he get a nice tip? Uh, yeah, you got a nice Good. tip. Good. I just want to make sure. Big you tip. Know. Big tip. <laughs> well, we actually have um, Dax Flame. Which yes. is really Which I'm ready exciting. to bring out. Uh, is Dax there anything Flame, else you want to discuss? Madison. Is there anything else we need to discuss, Ian? Yeah, one more thing. Uh, I'm raising chickens. I got a family of three chickens. They're beautiful. They got nice shiny coats. They're losing a little bit of feathers around their necks. Uh, I'm not sure what that's due to. I think it might be mites. So I got some poultry dust. That's apparently really good for warding off mites and other things. Uh, and they're great. They're shitting out like five or six eggs a day, or at least feels that really? way. It's a lot. Wait, I'm, five or six that's where per I'm most or between protein. them? Between them. Okay, that's a lot of eggs. My goodness. Yeah, I can't keep up with them. So I'm trying. If anyone's got suggestions for what I can do with these eggs, uh, <laughs> I can send you guys eggs. Um, I don't know how they're going to hold up in the mail. You can make a quiche. Yeah, we've been making quiche a lot. I I love the quiche. Oh, it's really good. You know what I've been quiche. doing? Take like broccoli or spinach, cook it down with some oil, and then you take like eight eggs, put it in a, uh, what do you call that dish? It's like a baking dish, really. It's just like a glass. Right, right. Souffle dish? I don't know. No. What? Souffle? Why, why are you so offended by that? <laughs> it might be no. souffle, right? What are you it's stupid? Kind of, kind of like what are you souffle. stupid, Ethan? Yeah. Where'd well, you come you, up with souffle? In Israel, souffle is a dessert. <laughs> yeah. But in like, America, oh, it's, it's not. It's not. Oh. Yeah. What? I thought souffle was a dessert. Yeah. I still think of it as a dessert, but it but it, I see I think a it's a souffle, and a souffle dish. Are similar. Google souffle <laughs> dish. Here, you laugh after I offended you so much. Let's is, take it, a, is, is it a Pyrex? Is that yes, the Pyrex. Well, isn't Pyrex just the glassware? Right. 
Yes. It could be any glassware. You. Correct. <laughs> Souffle dish. Let's see what that comes up. Hang on. Okay. Just yeah. What I it's would it's, come it's up. exactly what you thought. Okay. So English is my first so, language. <laughs> Stop. You know, fine. I know. Ela doesn't make any mistakes. <laughs> I mean, God. <laughs> you're, you're, well, you're, you're over here calling I aloe, do think aloe. It's a fire. Okay. Wait. Hold on. While we're criticizing, saying, "Oh, Ethan is my, my first wait. language." What do you call that dessert in Hebrew? Souffle. Okay. So there you go. You see. So like we're on the same footing. <laughs> Ethan, what? What if you did like a like a bit on the show? <laughs> Where it was like not like a spelling bee, but like a pronouncing <laughs> bee, or like a <laughs> that's kind of funny. Some where you maybe compete against like a fan or something like that. You bring people in, so, test your knowledge on words. So like I like that the guys the guys would prepare yeah. like a kind of pronunciation, words, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and definition. I mean. Yeah. I feel like I okay. I mean, I think I would. I mean, I think you guys think I would, that would do be bad, funny. But I think like, I would do better than you think. I think it's funny. It is funny. <laughs> or we because, could try and spell the words the way Ethan thinks the words are meant yes. to be pronounced. <laughs> I think you just have a talent of mixing it up. You're actually really yeah. smart. It's it has, okay. Now I'm really smart. You are. <laughs> it's not related. <laughs> well, I am. I am mildly dyslexic. <laughs> So but it's kind of funny. It's, but I can't blame it all funny. on that. It really is funny. Especially when you make it the point. It's the whole point of the show to do it. It's because it's distracting when you just sort of casually say, yeah, it's got alloy in it. And I'm saying, <laughs> yeah, you're alloy, like, what kind right. of metal does, is there inside this? But I think that I, I'm down. I mean, it sounds great to me. <laughs> we should do it. Okay. You want to be the first contestant? <laughs> yeah. We'll have to call it... Um, I'll 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 um, be the Nick Cannon. I'll judge it or host it. You want to be like Nick Cannon? Yeah. Oh wait, no. Nick Cannon's yeah, canceled. Out, it can't dude. be Nick you, Cannon. You don't want to be like yeah. Nick Cannon. Well, <laughs> like, it can't be Nick Cannon. <laughs> we shot Nick Cannon out of a cannon. We said, "Ta ta." No, what were we talking about? Take the eggs, crack them in a oh, dish, yeah. a bake safe dish, whatever you want to call it, and get a shitload of cheese. I mean, like a fucking like way more than you think that you would need and then double it and then you take the broccoli and the spinach cooked you put it in the egg and with the cheese you bake it at 350 until the top is like a little crispy and i'm telling you dude that shit is fire you don't it that's it it's, it's the best three simple ingredients so there you go that's my suggestion okay I'll, i'm i might do that the cheese thing sounds a bit dangerous you have to um, do are you lactose intolerant uh no but just like that quantity of cheese just seems not like uh, – not good. I'm trying to cut and trying to bulk up. I'm, well, I it's a just shitload a, of protein, bro. Oh, and yeah. And veggies. It's, I, I mean, mean – It I would think be it's protein. True. Yeah. You can do a little bit of cheese. No, it needs cheese. I'm just telling you. It needs, All right. I'll douse in cheese. Fine. No, it needs a lot of cheese. Otherwise, it's just <laughs> like a ton of egg and vegetables, and it's just like, what am I doing here? It needs the cheese. <laughs> Right. Uh -huh. awesome. All right. Enough of that. But yeah, just want to talk about the chickens. That's it. So okay, you're just wondering what to do with the eggs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I work cleared up. I think I I got it all off my chest. What do you, you feed the know? chickens? How much how much maintenance do chickens require? Oh, not too much. I like letting them out of their coop once every uh, couple of days. Let them roam in the backyard for a day. Let them pick things out of the yard. They're they're cool. They're kind of like uh, William Osmond said they're kind of like insects. Hmm. And hmm. I kind of agree with that assessment. They're really quite stupid because you think of birds, you're like, they're smart, like parrots and all these things. Hmm. They talk. Uh, but chickens are really quite stupid. Hmm. No they're, personality. They're not good problem solvers. They, uh, they're not quite like dogs, but you shake like a bag of mealworms or something. They'll come running up. It'll feel like they're a dog. But then you realize if there's like, any like little barrier between you and them, they can't navigate. They it won't at get all. to you. <laughs> They're, yeah. You, and you don't feel like bonding, bonded with them. They're too stupid to bond with. Yeah, too dumb. <laughs> I open my arms for to have them come in and give me like a hug or like rest That's their nice. naked necks on mine, but they don't do it. They're just like pecking at my hands, pecking <laughs> at my feet. Like, are you made of food? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. do, would you feel bad at any point to slaughter them for, for me? Oh, not at all. I wouldn't. Yeah. I've considered it a couple times. Cause I'm like, they're just a bit of a hassle. <laughs> 
Would you, you kill know? them yourself? Uh, probably not. You no. would take them. To I'd a send them to a, a farm or something. That's interesting that you're you you're so unbonded with them. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean they're. But that's they're it. Chickens. I mean, back in the yeah. day, you know. Yeah. People, well, people slaughter like really smart animals. You know. So is this a COVID thing? You just wanted to have like eggs. Uh, no, it just happened to correspond with COVID. It was just a weird little coincidence. Uh, Let me ask you this. To the value of the eggs, like monetary value, how does the monetary value of the eggs compare to the amount of money you spend on the chickens? Do you think you're making money? I think it's probably a wash. Um, uh, The coop is obviously like a big upfront expense. If we eliminate that and pretend that that's not part of it, it's like, you're maybe paying a little bit more than you would uh, at the store. However, it's it's pretty cruelty free, and I'm actually mm. uh, kind of uncertain why um, some vegans are like uh, a bit upset. I think with the pro- prospect of uh, raising your own chickens because you can no. make sure that they have plenty of space, yeah, and and all of that. But I think it's just the general concept of using animals as a resource. Period. Yeah, uh, that's the problem, but. It's super symbiotic. It's nice. Interesting. Um, and how are the egg? How's the egg quality compared to what you find in the store? Oh no, it's it's the same. It's, it's the like same shit. Okay. Everyone that you talk about, like, is going to be like, "Oh my gosh, you've never tasted anything <laughs> as good as a homegrown egg." It tastes exactly yeah. the same. Fucking. So yeah. do they do they like uh, cockadoodle do in the morning? I think that's a uh, rooster. Oh, that's a yeah. Rooster. That would have to be a, right. the that's male, a male. male version. Where are all the males, by the way? You don't have males. No, mm. I don't. I don't think there's much of a reason to. I think you, if you have a lot, I think you want to have like one male rooster for a certain amount of females, okay. either to feel safe or something, some shit like that. But I will say to the your point of cockadoodle doing in the morning, they will make. Uh, <laughs> I can only compare it to like someone blowing out a toilet when they're shitting out their eggs they make a lot of strained noises oh my god really what time in the morning are we talking (laughs) i mean basically the time when you'd hear a rooster like 5 a.m 6 a.m uh 7 a.m i'd say do you think your neighbors can hear your chickens shitting eggs Oh, they, they can, yeah. Damn, sure. I'd be pissed if I was your neighbor. I'd be like, this motherfucker. You should offer them some eggs. <laughs> yeah, you should. That's true. <laughs> um, wow, that is very weird. Ian. I think that's cool. No, it's not it's weird. Cool, How dare you? But it's also it's weird. weird. It's a little, a little weird. weird. But I think it's cool, it's cool, too. I mean, you connect with the like, You earth. can be cool and weird. Right? Yeah. Weird that's is cool. That's kind of the whole point. Right. In Hell Santa yeah. Cruz, everyone has a bumper sticker that says, keep Santa Cruz weird. There you go. I think everywhere that has, has that. graffiti <laughs> has keep so and so weird, keep Portland <laughs> fucky, keep San Francisco not gen. Uh, what is it? Gentrified. <laughs> Whatever. Right, right, right. What do they say about LA? They say keep LA, keep LA uh, smoggy. <laughs> LA smoggy. I like that. <laughs> All right, are we, so uh, we, bring are we going on? So Dax? let's bring out Madison? the. Yeah, should I call him Dax or Madison? You can call him whatever you want. I'll call I him think Dax. He, he kind of enjoys getting a variety of okay. uh, comments. So let's figure it out. Let's navigate that space. Okay. We are going to bring on the the uh, the subject I, I, Ian's subject of his new documentary, Dax Flame. He is the I want to say. Infamous, really, one of the early, early YouTubers, and uh, people would say an enigma. I think people, the thing that you often hear about Dax is people can't tell if he is doing a character or if he's being genuinely himself. That's one of the fascinations with him. Regardless, he's a nice, sweet guy from all I can tell, and I'm looking forward to talking to him. So I'm going to go take a quick shit. We're going to do a little cut, and then we'll bring out Dax. Okay. Was not necessary to say it. Well, I felt like just <laughs> keeping everyone updated. I'll be right back. Well, with us we have Dax Flame, Ooh. otherwise known as um, what Madison. Were, Madison, or, or Theodore, even uh, as according to your Wikipedia page, a man of many names. Oh, I didn't put it on there. Yeah. <laughs> what do you prefer to go by, or do you not have a preference? 
Well, people call me a little bit of everything, so I don't care. But it's, it's usually Dax or Madison. No one calls me Theodore anymore. Um, yeah. Um, why Dax Flame? Where did that name come from? Uh, uh, just like a 15-year-old version of what I thought was cool at the time. And then if, if uh, I, that's just what I got famous with, so it's what I still go by. But at the time, it was just what I thought was a cool name. Obviously, as a 28-year-old, I don't like think the same, but I, it's like my stage name now because that's what I got credited in as movies. And yeah. Well, to give to to give you credit, I think that my pseudonyms that I was making at 15 years old were way less cool than that. <laughs> they were probably like um, I'm trying to think of some of the dumb names I had in video games. You know what I'm talking about? Dildo Saggins. Yeah. Dildo perhaps. Saggins. Yeah. <laughs> Butt fudge is is with me to this day. <laughs> But, I mean, that's on the tip to be cool. Right. That's just being goofy, right? That is just being goofy. No, uh, what do you think about Poop Feast 420? That's my current uh, <laughs> tag name on, on my video games. Do you like Poop Feast 420? It depends what you're going for. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. Um, how does it feel, Dax? I want to talk about the documentary. You are the You are the subject of Ian... Uh, new documentary. How do you feel being selected as the subject of a documentary? Ooh, lucky. Yeah, because because it was really fun to do. Got to make a game show that I've been dreaming of making. Mm. And I was thinking maybe I would do a Kickstarter for the game show at the time. Mm. But who knows if that would have gone through. Mm. So to just be able to go make it was awesome. Um, and then now, um, can you still hear me if I'm like this? Uh -huh. Yes. Um, now, uh, now, um, now everyone's watching it and it's been out for like two hours or something and getting so many views, which is crazy. And my video is getting a lot more views than it ever gets. So that's really exciting. How did it feel watching the documentary, the final product? Uh, it's really fun to watch. Um, it's really interesting to like, cause you, you like, you know, you live your whole life and to have someone else summarize your life is interesting. <laughs> You think he did a good job? You think he nailed you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's good. It's really good. Yeah. <laughs> um, would you criticize it in front of him? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Dax? Let me ask you this. Why do you think people are so confused about you? Because I'm sure the most common comment you get from everybody who knows you, who meets you, is I can't tell if you're being serious or if you're kidding, why is it that you think people are so confused? I think just because probably I think like 15 year old me was a lot more like wacky and like just manic. And mm. especially when I turned the camera on back then, it's like you start to see that get attention. So I just would lean into that. So mm. I think that that's like, like they just probably hadn't seen someone like as similar to that. Although I could, used to get a lot of comments saying like, oh, there's someone just like this at my school. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so this story in your most popular video, you say you stole from your girl, uh, the girl you had a crush on, you stole out of her bag. The what was it? The box? The what? Pencils. Pencils? And you broke all of her Snap pencils? Some pencils, yeah. So uh, is that true? You stole stuff out of her bag? Yeah, well, it, it, it's just like an awkward attempt at flirting uh, that I try to avoid thinking about these days. But uh, I'm open to talking about it with people because I know they're interested in it. But yeah. Because when I, when I see that video, I, I tell myself, there's no way this actually happened. But you stand by the fact that you did take stuff out of her purse for the purpose of flirting with her and being like, hey, look what I found. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, how did it come to fruition? Did you ever return the items to her? Uh, I think I, I think, I think you I put like, it back in I, the bag, right? In the story. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know if I ever took them. Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think I just snapped the pencils and yeah, put it back. Yeah, and put it back. <laughs> and then, or maybe I took No, glasses. no, but you had stuff with him. He was on his desk and he's like, look at the stuff I took out of her bag. Some glasses. And yeah. Maybe a oh, ring yeah. or something. So did you ever return it to her? <laughs> I think that's a uh, I. I, I don't know. I don't remember. I think I like, maybe I was wearing the glasses the next day or something. I don't know. Oh, man. 
<laughs> that's just it. I think that's what makes it so interesting and confusing is because I think normally people who are in your position, young and a little bit socially awkward, wouldn't then make a video presenting that concept to people. <laughs> I think the idea that just the fact that it shared makes it unbelievable. Well, I think whenever you like are getting attention for something and like you're getting a lot of positive feedback, hmm. it just <laughs> makes you want to like, like, like do that. Yeah. Yeah. Did but, you have like uh, comedic influence at the time that you were looking up to comedians that uh, you? I liked I liked like listening to stand up comedy and stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. I think I would just like listen to people on YouTube. Um, I like Jerry Seinfeld and mm. uh, love Jerry Seinfeld. You like Seinfeld, the show. I, I don't watch that. Uh, I think I watched it once when I got my wisdom teeth out. Just had oh, to, like, at the dentist, sit and watch they made you watch it. it. <laughs> what? <laughs> they made you watch some shit when they're working on your teeth. No, whenever I had to take the painkillers for a couple of days, oh. and they're just like, oh. I see. All I could do is mm. watch TV, yeah. and that was what was on. Okay, let me ask you. Uh, when you made that video, and I'm sorry, I know this is old news, right? This, this you probably talked about a million times, but I'm oh, curious. No, it's okay. You've made when did you know that it was funny when you made this video about stealing stuff from the your the girl you liked's bag, or was it like a confession? What was the intention behind that video? I don't know. I think I was just feeling sort of uh, hyped that day, so I was like, I, I was hyped on hyped on the girl, hyped on having a. Uh, like a lot of views on YouTube probably. And mm. uh, I just remember being really excited as I uploaded it. I was just like, and excited to go back to school the next day and stuff. Um, but yeah, yeah. I think I always knew that um, I, I like, I, I always got so many comments saying that stuff was funny. So um, I don't know. Like, I think it was like this mixture of uh, uh, like, yeah, just like, uh, I, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have lost my period thought. Um, how do you feel about being compared? People always say, another thing I always hear about you is people say you're the Andy Kaufman of YouTube or something like that, or they compare you to Andy Kaufman a lot. Do you accept that comparison or how do you feel about that? I, I like some of it. Um, whenever I've like looked him up and stuff, I, I like, I, I don't connect completely he seems a little jerkish in some ways, hmm. but I did like, I, I watched like the man on the moon movie and stuff. And that's really good. Um, yeah. But I guess what they mean is like the, he had this, he skirted the same line, right. Of not knowing who the real him is, where the real him is and where the character starts and stops. For sure. Yeah. I think like, I think like, uh, the mystery element, I definitely connect with because that's always been a big factor in like people watching me. Uh, so, so yeah, there's always been like a huge aura of mystery around my videos, um, which I think, uh, is good for people like entertainment, mm -hmm. like, like people enjoy that. Mm -hmm. But when I, when I saw you in Ian's documentary, I get the feeling that you don't, maybe you don't really get where the mystery is at. I feel like maybe you just. Do you understand why people think that you're mysterious or to you, are you just being yourself? I, I think I get some of it. Yeah. But I also don't really need to examine it because it's like, right. If I try and find a line and then address the line specifically, it's better just to who cares because yeah. the mystery is good. So well, uh, uh, yeah. What do you feel about the YouTube landscape today? Cause you were one of the, t the early, early creators, right? At the time I recall, you were like 16th most subscribed channel with like 250,000 subscribers. Just to give you an idea. That no, uh, probably more like 100,000. Oh, 100. Oh. <laughs> so YouTube was in its infancy very much, but you were one of the top creators at the time. Um, obviously, a lot's changed. What do you think now when you look at kind of the leaderboard of who, what's popular on YouTube now? I, I actually don't know how to find the leaderboard, how it used to be, because they used to have like a top 100 where you click through. Oh. Uh, so I don't know, like I, I can't identify the leaderboard, but I definitely see what's trending and stuff. Um, and uh, my thoughts are, I don't, I don't know, it's all fine, whatever. Um, 
I, there's some, I, I, I like to watch stuff. I'll click on trending sometimes and find some stuff, listen to music on YouTube. And, um, I, it's definitely, if you're a YouTube celebrity now compared to back then, you're like a legit celebrity. Yeah. I thought that was really interesting that you pointed out how back then that wasn't the case. And today I guess it's true. I mean, it's still cool. kind of like weird to think about, but like YouTube celebrity is like celebrity. Pretty the much. audience is way bigger. The subscribers are way bigger. And you make money now. I mean, back then you didn't even make money, yeah. right? Yeah. Actually, in high school, I probably saved up like $10,000 because after I was most popular, then they started to pay people like with a mm -hmm. partnership program. So I was on the second wave of the partnership program. Mm -hmm. So you and did make I a little think, money. Yeah. I think these days you would uh, probably like, if you're in that position, you'd go appear on talk shows like Ellen and stuff. And right. like, you know, that's what the more route that team influencers go, I think. Mm. Um, Are you still working at the ice cream shop? No, 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 that the shop closed down uh, uh, in January. From so the sabotages? Was, <laughs> well, did you have no. anything to do with it? <laughs> no, I, I, I don't think that played a role. But you know, I'm curious. Uh, what do you think your manager will say when they see that part about the sabotage? I don't know. I I showed it to my assistant manager. She's really nice. Um, maybe I'll send her this video. And um, she was. I, I never hated her or anything. And I won't actively say anything about anyone else who I might have not liked. Um, but the yeah, I won't say anything. But uh, if they found it. Um, They'd be shocked. I think. They, they would not like it. Yeah. Because you, they probably thought you were the upstanding, you know, employee. But no, no, they didn't. Oh, they did. Also, want to get no. So I was trying to get a raise for so long. It's such old news now. Because then I went and worked at like a cafe for a week. I worked at the sushi place, and then I've been living off unemployment checks, which has been great because it pays a lot. And uh, you know, I haven't had to work, so I've just been able to stay home and be creative and not worry about Corona or anything. So that was really lucky. But um, they didn't think I was upstanding, I don't think. <laughs> but well, then why would they be shocked that you were giving away free ice cream, I wonder? <laughs> well, they'd be shocked that I wrote a book. That yeah. you wrote a book, I see. <laughs> but I did, I did used to email the owners and stuff and, like, ask them if, they would, if I could ever do an interview with them and stuff or, like, uh, like email them this draw, drawing I did of them and stuff like that and email the GM and stuff. But, um, oh, I talked to the GM. was there. So there were multiple GMs there, too, so... It's an ice cream uh, empire, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, but then the whole place. Well, edit this out if it's not legal to say anything like this, but the whole place like went bankrupt eventually. And um, I don't want to say anything else. It sounds like a... <laughs> and the reason <laughs> because it went bankrupt is because... The free ice cream. Don't have it down. Much yeah, the free ice cream. <laughs> Well, that part of your book sounded so funny. I um, I actually immediately after watching the documentary, I ordered both of your books because I really cool. want to read them. <laughs> and I thought the cover looked cool too. Yeah, I like. Oh, it. thank you. Yeah. They're That's all on funny. Amazon, by the way. If anyone wants to uh, support Dax, anyone wants to read his literature, definitely head on over. Your your pen name is Dax Flame, right? All the books are under that name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why is it that you think you were overlooked for the promotion that you sought so, so passionately? You're at an ice cream store, you're working your butt off, you're keeping everything organized. What's going on? Why did they give you reasons why you kept getting passed over? How long did you work there? 15 months. That's a long time. A long time. Like a year and a few months. Did you get any raises uh, in that also, time? Thanks for having me on the podcast. Thanks for, I don't know why oh. that just hurt me, but. Um, anyways, thank you. You're welcome. Thank because, you for joining um, us. I think because uh, people don't like to pay someone more money. So if you know that this person is going to keep working there no matter what, you don't have to pay them more. So, mm. I, uh, so to the big uh, corporate then, world. Hmm. Yeah. Well, ultimately, they, they did go you, bankrupt. So I guess maybe it wasn't, uh, <laughs> maybe they didn't have the leverage to, to give you a raise after all. Yeah. So then, so because they kept promising. This state, this state will give you the raise. We'll give you a promotion to like senior scooper was the position. Senior um, scooper. And, <laughs> senior scooper. Yeah. And um, and then 
I think that maybe they would have followed through if, if the money wasn't getting tight because they, yeah. So, so who knows? Maybe I was mad at them for the wrong reasons, you know, always mm. got to Is it? The other um, side. May I ask how much of a raise you were pursuing? <laughs> From $15 an hour to $16 an hour. Oh, That's wow. what senior scooper gets paid. Is it one of, Was it about the money or was it about the prestige? Uh, <laughs> honestly, the probably the acknowledgement. Yeah, oh. yeah. But I, I, mean, know it, I know it sounds really silly uh, <laughs> no. to get so fixated on something like that. It, I, 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 at the time, it felt important. Um, but like, uh, I don't know. But yeah, is it one of the worst jobs? I always feel like the. In the world? Yeah. Like, the, the, <laughs> given the people, all the different flavors. I don't know why. I always feel like it's got to be a really well, annoying I, job. Yeah. I like talking to people. Uh, that I enjoyed that, I guess. What I hated was, like, cleaning and stuff. There's mm -hmm. so much cleaning to do. And it was this really big shop. So there was lots of surfaces to clean and stuff after closing. Mm -hmm. And it stayed open late, too. So I'm glad I'm not there. <laughs> How many, what do you recall any instances of people requesting an, an, an absurd amount of samples? Some people would sample everything and I didn't mind that if they seemed like nice and fun to talk to, but I did mind whenever they were like, like one thing that just popped into my mind, this like one specific thing someone said to me was, I remember we had these Mickey Mouse flavors for a bit. Uh, and uh, and this man was asking about them. And I was like, we have three different of the Mickey Mouse flavors. And he's like, I really couldn't care less, man. And then he started asking for other samples. I was like, thinking, well, why did you ask, ask me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and was he by himself or was he with people? I don't remember. Because I feel like that would be re even weirder if he was by himself, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get a lot of weird people. And, and coming into mm -hmm. Did you eat? I, I noticed that in the documentary. I don't eat ice cream. Yeah, you preempt. <laughs> you kind of finished my question. You got ahead of it. <laughs> I was going to say, is that in the documentary, you said you hate ice cream. Is that a result of working there? Or did you hate ice cream before you started working there? Well, I used to love ice cream. And then I wanted to try to not eat it for a week. And then I kept doing that. And then I started to like fruit because I never liked healthy things before that. Oh. So then I was like, I guess my taste buds desensitized a bit. So then fruit started to taste good. And now I just try and stick with that because I like smoothies so much. So do you think and, it's um, accurate to say you hate ice cream? Because that seems maybe a strong statement for what you just I would described. Probably, I would probably enjoy it, but... At the time that we filmed the documentary, I was working around it also, right, and right, I right. despised. The but it was not only ice cream that you said you hate. It was ice cream, cereal, and popcorn, right? Yeah, cereal and popcorn I hate because of the texture. That's a lot of really great items. Yeah. To hate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, popcorn. It's like I don't the know definition ever... of everyone's like favorite foods, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, let me ask you this: What's your favorite food? Take your time, too. Are you very picky with food? No, I... I well, I'm vegetarian. I, I like meat a lot, but I haven't eaten it for a while. But um, I'm vegetarian. I like Impossible Burgers. Those are really good. There um, you go. Mm -hmm. Beyond Burgers about. aren't that good to me. But Impossible Burgers are really good. Um, <laughs> and uh, smoothies, of course. Uh, but I feel good <laughs> right, saying right. that. How could, I forget, how could I even ask that? <laughs> Now, in this smoothie, your concept for the smoothie show, do you think it would be funny maybe to, f because it seemed like all the ingredients were relatively good, and then people would, would be, they would be going to choose an ingredient, and you'd be like, oh, don't choose that, I don't like that. It seems well, like- Well, I didn't understand that those ingredients were placed there for the sabotage round, because <laughs> yeah. if I thought that they wouldn't pick those, like the, the granola, you know, same texture as cereal, and mm -hmm. uh, See, that doesn't corn syrup. You know what would Unhealthy. be a real sabotage for me what? would be like fish oil or something like that. 
I put flaxseed oil in my smoothies as long as you can't taste it and it adds some health. I'll but that's it. what I'm saying. It seems like ultimately the goal is you still want to end up with a relatively good smoothie at worst. But what I'm wondering is possibly <laughs> potentially the sabotage How could be bad can it yeah, get? something really disgusting like tomatoes, fish oil or something like that. You know what I mean? Would you taste fish oil? I think it would taste very bad, but maybe that's funny. Yeah. Right? Then I would, yeah, that would be a great sabotage thing. <laughs> yeah. Destroy their chances of winning that round. I guess I yeah. will say that this is something that I sh- that we struggled with when when trying to come up with like the sabotage idea. I think at one point I was like, I had the same thought, Ethan, where I was like, yeah, let's put a fish in there, like a big salmon. You come out with a big salmon. <laughs> uh, Dane was like, yeah, we can call it salmon taj, <laughs> and, and it, it was. It was one of those things where I think there was just a miscommunication. Uh, it, it almost seemed like Dax just also just wanted enjoyable smoothies. Like yeah, that's what it seemed like anyway. <laughs> well, yeah, I think that that would have been a good idea, the salmon or the fish oil, because that would have been more obvious. The person would have accidentally pick it, and I would have to say, don't pick it. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, I wouldn't recommend putting the sabotage next to the normal ingredients either. But although if somebody <laughs> pick, if somebody Label like it. proactively chooses a sabotage ingredient, you should probably just let them. That just means they're a bad contestant, right? Yeah, but I don't want to put someone in that position because you saved us because we <laughs> lost our opponent. Yeah, mm-hmm. the housekeeper crushed it. I mean, I I was very impressed oh, by yeah. her. Yeah, she won every round. Yeah, she, and she sh- kind of flaunted on that. She flexed on that guy too a little bit, didn't she? Yeah, when he was yeah. having a hard time opening the mixer. Yeah, she's kind of a legend. <laughs> yeah, Latisha she was sweat. awesome. You have you uh, have you seen Fear Factor? I'm like a aficionado of that show. I think when I was a kid, I saw it because they used to make smoothies and some of the challenges, but they would be with, I think like, I've seen that with testicles like a and yeah, intestines and shit, n- stuff like that. Rats. But, like, I think that might be more entertaining to watch because I guess maybe there's not That's that... a different crowd. But I just don't think... I'm, I just question how entertaining it is to watch somebody drink a delicious smoothie. Well, I think I also want to promote, like, health and stuff through, like, showing healthy ingredients. So, actually, that could be used in the sabotage, though, what you're saying. Combine just, the best of both worlds. <laughs> right. That's maybe that's what it is. <laughs> but ultimately, you're the one that has to drink it. So maybe we have to put other people up to drinking it. Mm. Yeah. Okay, if you don't I also to- had another I- reality show idea recently, today or yesterday. <laughs> but I, I don't think I should talk about it yet. Okay. Do, would you <laughs> consider? Right would you consider if you make the smoothie game show? Would you consider having the winner on, like in Jeopardy, and maybe she can continue on? Oh, yeah, that's what I would like to do. Have like 20 <laughs> episodes of that and then a 10 episode playoff round where best of like this person, this, then ultimately there's a championship. Oh, there's like a but, bracket. Yeah, that's why we have to get rid of Corona amongst other reasons. But then if Corona was gone, we could film the. <laughs> yeah, that's the main that's reason yeah. we need to get rid of this <laughs> virus. The main reason. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. I mean, fuck. I need, a, I need to know. I need that bracket. Shit. What are you looking to be doing with yourself, ideally? Like, what are your goals right now? I don't know. I don't know what to do with my life, but I do know what my next steps are. Like, I'm always good at picking the next thing. Um, But there's something I've been writing, but I don't know if I should talk about it or not. You Uh, want to give... What's that? But, but, (laughs) well, I don't know. But there's a couple things that I'm working on that I'm excited about. A book or talk. like a script? or Yeah, talk about it, Max. Oh, it's okay. okay. I just have a new book I'm probably going to put out in like oh. a week Oh, two. cool. Oh, fantastic. Nice. About quarantine. About oh. quarantine. Oh, that's a great topic. That's and like I, I've had a couple business ideas I've been working on and stuff. But like always I just like I have an idea and I just like go with it and it either pans out or it doesn't or maybe it turns into something else. Um, so I just like go with that. But eventually I probably need to find like a good job or like uh, – or yeah, figure something out. But is writing your main thing that you like doing, or acting? Yeah, or? I love. Uh, I love all of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure if we included it in the documentary, but there was we we did talk about uh, a little bit more in depth, like 
what his uh, Dax's goals and dreams are, like dream job and stuff like that. And in general, like uh, it's just kind of anything creative Mm -hmm. and like within the entertainment sphere. I think he he'd be down to do pretty much any of it as long as it's not some robot job. (laughs) I feel that. I feel the I mean, yeah, Yeah. you know, I totally get that. The hours are the worst part of those kinds of jobs. What were your shifts like? Well, just like you never knew what your schedule would be. So sometimes you'd work till like midnight and then sometimes you'd start. I've been there. I hate that. Yeah, Yeah, that's right. It's almost like cruel and unusual to have someone work a shift at 8 a.m. And then any time during the week, they might have to come in at 5 p.m. It's like, who can, and then they work till like 12 or 1. I mean, who can live their life so unscheduled? What were y'all's least favorite young people? jobs? What were my, sorry, say it again. What were y'all's least favorite jobs? My favorite job? Um, least favorite. Oh, my least favorite. favorite. Oh, that's easy for me. Yeah, it's easy for me too. When I was, uh, when was this? I think it was during a summer. My parents made me get a job. And I really didn't want to work like fast food just for whatever reason. I didn't, I didn't look down on it or it wasn't like that. I mean, it's a fun, you know, I think all jobs are admirable. My brother worked at Taco Bell and he didn't hate it, but uh, I just didn't want to work in fast food. So I looked in the newspaper for any opportunity and I found this company at the time they were paying $15 or maybe it was $12 an hour, but it was like good pay for the time. Cause this was a long time ago. The minimum wage was like $7 an hour or something, seven twenty five. So I was like, shit, you know, $10, $12 an hour. It's a little extra money. I like that right off the bat. The job was, First of all, I went first to the interview and they give you this test. Uh, It's like a multiple choice test, like three sheets of paper. You fill out the answers. I remember specifically they gave me a pencil, not a pen. (laughs) I thought, I don't know why that stuck out to me, but uh, they were really horrible. Like just, you'd have to be brain dead not to, not to answer these questions correctly. So the bar was already really low. I passed the test. The job itself was going into huge retail stores like Walmarts, uh, Targets, Ralphs, stuff like that. You go in after store hours and you have a little laser gun and you just scan inventory to take inventory of their stock. I don't know. I guess back then they didn't really have the technology. Mm -hmm. So they had all these people come in in the middle of the night and just scan shit, right? Mm -hmm. So the hours were insane. They were like, like sometimes we would start at one o'clock, 1 a.m. So I had, so I'm by nature a night owl, I would say. And so forcing myself to like try to go to bed at, you know, 4 p.m. was not, it wasn't just difficult. It was impossible. So I'd lay in bed just trying to sleep. I would end up just not sleeping at all, getting up at 1 a.m., which is just ungodly. And then driving, you know, in the dead of night out into, like, some bullshit retail store. And I remember one night I was so tired, I left my car keys in the door for the entire eight-hour shift. And then I came back. I was like, where's my car, my keys? I can't believe I lost my car keys. And I went back to my car and the keys were in the fucking door the whole time. <laughs> That's how tired how I was. How old are you? Oh, probably like 18. Oh, okay. dang. And anyway, the job, the work was just like beyond it's an horrible. inventory count, right? It was just monotonous. Mm-hmm. They were, they, they had like these pros, right? Like they had like inventory ninjas who had been there for like 30 years. And they were, they were like. They were making fifteen dollars an hour, <laughs> and they were like scanning, like, like, uh, yeah. you know, I've it was high noon. I've had to do that too. I've had to do that when I was working in like a retail shop, and I think they do it like once a year or something. And mm-hmm. it was the biggest nightmare. Well, we were the cavalry, right? They called us in when they wanted mm-hmm. it really good. But the problem was, I sucked. I fucking sucked at the job for some reason I couldn't scan accurately and then they would have like because I was a noob they would bring in like the uh, they would bring in the doc holiday of scanning <laughs> to, to fact check my work and then they'd be like dude you got the count wrong like every time they'd be like dude you got the count wrong that feels the worst when you're already in like a a job that you feel like you're 
not better than, but like yeah. at least qualified for, <laughs> like bare right. minimum. And they come in, they're like, oh yeah, you're actually not doing your job nearly as efficient and good as you could be. You know, yeah. and I was just the worst. Fu- I mean, I was just miserable, dude. And the people, you know, the people took their job so seriously who were these scanners. And I just thought, found the whole thing so That's fucking funny. ridiculous. Um, my worst job that was, was my worst uh, job by far was a waitress. Just I've I, I had many like many of those kind of like shitty whatever jobs, but just in general being a waitress and there was a specific restaurant that was the worst social club. No, well, that was bad, but um, I didn't I was only there a week, so it doesn't <laughs> really count. But the Italian one. Um, oh, what, really? That was your worst job? Yeah, because the food wasn't good. <laughs> oh, and so it was expensive too. And it was kind of expensive and um it would everything would fall on me from both sides. Like the customers weren't happy and then the people in the kitchen were douchebags. So it's like you go to the kitchen to complain on behalf of the customer, you get yelled at and then you go give a bad answer to the customer and you get yelled at so it was like the worst job ever it doesn't sound fun yeah i feel like that there could be really high variance for like a waitressing job like Mm -hmm. it could be really good if the food's awesome Mm -hmm. the chefs or whoever else is accountable yeah and you have good customers but if you have like (laughs) any link in the chain is shitty it's all going to come down on the waiters and waitresses that's do you have a worse job since Uh, we're asking the Gap. <laughs> oh, you worked at The Gap? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Tell me about that. Um, it's a similar experience with you and the, the late night shift mm-hmm. thing. I went in for a general sales associate position, but uh, it was like a kind of a round table, bunch of people applying for the job, young people, older people. And they just sort of assumed that every guy there was there to work warehouse, like uh, do the shipping and receiving uh, and unloading of merchandise in the morning. So I got tasked on that. And it was the same experience as you where it was like, I'm a night owl. They want me to come in at 3 a.m. And it's like, this fucking sucks. Yeah, (laughs) I was like, there were there were (laughs) days. It's not good, but there were days where I was like driving home and it's like. It's. I'm f- like almost falling asleep at the wheel. Yeah. There were some close calls and I was just like, holy fuck. Like, it's good the roads are empty right now. Yep. <laughs> Otherwise, oh it'd God. be over. No, so I had, it was just, a, I don't know. It was like not good hours. And then also uh, kind of like Dax's example, people constantly coming in and out because they were giving a higher rate of uh, uh, pay at the time, $10 an hour. That mm-hmm. was like really good. Yeah. Um, compared to the eight uh minimum wage so they wanted to work you really hard they had like so they had a ton of employees they wanted to work you really hard for like eight hours a week or whatever the threshold was oh fucking god it's so crazy how they just game the system to fucking squeeze people for everything it's very stupid there was a reddit post recently where like i think it was mcdonald's or some Big company was trying to show uh, low income workers how they could live oh, comfortably. Yeah. McDonald's, I saw that. You saw that? Yeah. It was yeah. so Zero fucking heating. stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's a classic McDonald's thing where they had a budget. They're like, yeah. how do you make money <laughs> on minimum wage? And it included a second job and zero dollars for heating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and And didn't account for like, it, it, it's like best case scenario as far as like your rates of like electricity, trash, whatever else. It, it it assumes that you have negotiated as a poor person the best deal you can get for all of these services. <laughs> Just fucking bizarre. You know what was worse at that um, waiting job too that I was talking about? The, if you made a mistake, like... Um, any kind of mistake, like ordering the wrong item for someone mm-hmm. or someone got out without paying, they would take it out of your tips. Is that legal in Israel? Because it's that's, not legal here. I No, I think that's common in some... I don't know. I, I've heard stories like that. At least um, in California, that's not, oh. that's, I think it's not legal in California. Maybe it is in other states. 
I don't know, but that was so shitty. Yeah, it's so shitty. They also didn't pay us minimum wage, it was just tips. Oh, so that's the crazy thing in Israel, <laughs> is that, I think it's actually like that in some states too, not in California. Um, they can just, they don't have to pay you even a minimum wage. You yeah. just make money in tips. Which ends up being basically maybe a tiny bit more than minimum wage. Right. Yeah, and super high variance in what you're going to come home with at the end mm. of each day. Yeah. No predictability. You can't fucking count on anything. Yeah, that sucks. So, um, Dax, uh, may I ask you a personal question? I recently acquired a bidet. <laughs> and before we went on, I took a shit. I have a toilet literally right behind us. There's a bathroom there. And I used toilet paper for the first time in a while. Just, I like to remind myself of where I came from, you know, <laughs> to know where I'm going, as they say, or whatever. What I'm wondering, what I'm- What do you mean, like, 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 to stay in touch with the people? <laughs> well, I don't, I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily think that a bidet is so bougie. Because in Europe, everyone has a bidet, and you can buy, like, to, for example, one of our sponsors, Tushy, they make an attachment for $75. So it's not exactly bougie, although I will admit that ours is very bougie. Um, but what I'm what I'm leading to is what is your wiping uh, ritual? Oh, just the pretty average toilet paper. Yeah. From the front or the back? Oh, no comment. No comment. <laughs> I found, well, if I can give you my own anecdote, maybe it will encourage you to share. Is that okay. I think most people, most dudes, most dudes wipe from the back. I myself cup my balls and penis and wipe. I scoop out from the front and then back. I don't Same. do that anymore because you do that, Ian. Yeah, I've done. I, I I I don't cut my dick and balls, but <laughs> well, don't you? How do you? Don't you need to get them out of the way? <laughs> no, I'm pretty like you just spatially scoop. aware of where my rectum is and where the dick and balls. I just are like hanging. to get it out of the way, I guess. But I'm fascinated that you go from the front because a lot of people, when I came out of the closet as a front wiper, yeah, it was very. I caught a shocking. lot of shit for it. Uh, no pun intended. <laughs> and um, we did a poll. That re that showed actually, I think like thirty five to forty percent are front wipers. So our so I don't know if that encouraged you to share if you're front or back, but of course. Oh, I'm probably more in the majority there. You're uh, in the majority, yeah. Understood. So what do y'all think is the key to YouTube success? Changing topics. That was like <laughs> not. <laughs> damn. Talking about how you poop. Hang on, dude. We can't <laughs> steer that. <laughs> You don't like the topic of shit. Okay, fair enough. Not You're mad. listening to the key I, to YouTube I'll success. Listen. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> what is the key? The key to YouTube success is, well, you know, there's a couple different routes, okay? Um, there's the easy and fast way, which is just, you know, talking shit about people and sensationalized titles and thumbnails so that's a really easy way to the easy not I don't know if it's relatively easy because you still have to make like at least some something compelling about your videos, but that's certainly the the easiest way to uh, to YouTube success or at least rec or recognition. But the the infinitely more difficult way, and I hate to say it, almost even impossible. It seems like today is the genuine. Being a genuine person and just like I feel like to succeed on YouTube these days, you need some kind of shtick, right? Like uh, uh, not to not to deride uh, Mr. Beast because I think he's talented. And I like his channel. I'm just using him as an example. Is that like everything needs to be like the biggest and the best and the craziest idea? And he's really talented and really good at what he does. And I I, I think he's a great channel and he's a positive channel. So I'm I'm not at all trying to insult him. I just think that. He is kind of the model of YouTube success right now. Are you familiar with Mr. Beast? Yeah. So you kind of, that's like, unfortunately, there's a lot of competition for clicks and eyeballs on YouTube right now. And so, you know, making genuine grounded content, you can, you can certainly garner a fan base, but I guess success is, is obviously subjective, right? Like, I think uh, it's very important to like, uh, 
just like uh, decide what uh, success means to you. Because I think like Mr. Beast is a great example of how big, how successful you can be. Mm -hmm. But there are definitely a lot of channels making livable good incomes with a relatively small audience or niche audience. And I think that's what I would define success as personally. A lot of people just try to shoot for the stars or whatever, but I think definitely just having a uh, success could just be making a living wage, right? What did you mean, uh, Dax, when you asked? I, th I think that those answers combined are perfect because I was meaning like traditional. How do you become number one? How do you, uh, but, yeah, that's how I interpreted <laughs> it. What? Yeah, that's yeah. how I interpreted but, but, it. But yeah, the definition of success is everything in life. It is every. How do you define success? Just being happy. Are you successful? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes. And sometimes not. But then it happens again. <laughs> yeah. How do you even define happiness? I mean, is that an attainable goal? Even I mean, what what does that mean? There's a very good. I think these are, they're on TikTok and also Instagram. There's a guy who goes around asking complete strangers just cold calls him and says, Hey, like what, uh, uh, or are you happy? He just goes up to him and asks random people that, and you get quite a depth of answers from people. He talks to some homeless people who are smiling ear to ear and they're like, yeah, I'm living on the beach. This is awesome. I, I you know, I love my life. There's other people who are a little bit more like, uh, like to themselves and like, don't really want to share or feel like it's too personal to ask. Are you happy? Hmm. Um, Worth checking out. I don't know the name mm, of the channel. That is interesting. But. Yeah. But Dex, you were saying you define happiness, you said, by just feeling good? Uh, that's probably not, like, specific enough, but, like, like good. There's, like, like, a lot of things that go into it, but, like, good and healthy and, yeah. Uh, satisfaction on, like, that Maslow's pyramid thing. Ah, the pyramid of... Uh, like shelters at the bottom kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Got it. But you, I guess you feel, at least I learned from through the documentary, that your your income is a little unstable, right? That's kind of maybe the one factor. Yeah, that can really mess with your happiness if, if you're stressed about money all the time. So mm -hmm. fortunately, I haven't, I could have been so stressed with corona stuff if unemployment didn't come through. And mm -hmm. if I got sick too, so luckily stayed healthy and got that money and so uh good for the next few months because it paid me more than enough so i've just been buying food and nothing else um so saved up a little and then we'll see what happens um yeah uh, but yeah i've had lots of money before and no money at all and um and so yeah it's more fun to have money yeah i heard that you were you were paid you you were in two movies, uh, Twenty One Jump Street and and uh, what was the other one called? Project that, X. Project X. And you said you were paid enough that you lived off the money for like five years, right? Yeah. Well, I was also in uh, a few other movies, but those were the big ones that I got paid the most for. Are you? Uh, feel free not to answer, but I'm curious um, if you could ballpark what was your the payment for those projects. You don't have to answer, by the way. Oh, I could tell you whatever. I don't care. Um, so I probably got paid like, like 30,000 or 40,000 when I was filming them. And then I didn't know I would get residuals checks. Oh. So, uh, a couple years later, I started to get a random residuals check. So that started out really big. Uh, mm. so probably overall, probably like $300,000 from Dude, uh, acting crap. in those movies. Yeah. Um, and so still I'll get like a $200 residuals check every once in a while. Mm. Um, so that's cool. Um, um, but yeah, I lived off that for the longest time. That's a lot of money. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah that's, that's, that's acting a lot. Acting yeah. pays a lot when you can actually get it, but then it's just so hard to get. And right. auditions suck. And mm -hmm. yeah, why is it? It's it's it's. You've been through such a roller coaster. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Highs <laughs> and lows, right? Yeah. Yeah. How was it? You must ask yourself. How was it that you got cast in these two 
really, you know, successful roles. And then suddenly, like, you were unable to find work. I mean, why is that? Do you, you must ask yourself. I just started to suck at auditions. <laughs> like, the <laughs> first one was really good because you didn't really have to be a good actor because you're, like, just, like, Project X. That was, like, a good acclimate, act, getting acclimated uh, to acting because, uh, like, you're allowed to just, like, look at the camera and, like, film. And, like, um, so that was the perfect first role. Um, and then 21 Jump Street came like a year later, even though they were released at the same time. Um, and then, uh, I got really close on like, we are the Millers. I got like second place. Um, uh, like, and I even went to an audition with Jason Sudeikis. I got really close on this Ryan Gosling movie that he made. Um, but I don't think many people saw it, but I did a lot of auditions and Christina Hendricks was going to play my mom. And then, um, I, and then I, I got close on maybe one other movie, and then I just started to do really, really bad in auditions. Like, I couldn't memorize my lines and mess up mm. all the time. Um, and uh, so then I started writing screenplays. I've written a lot of screenplays because uh, then you just make your own movie, act in your own movie, make a game show. Mm-hmm. You think you got psyched out maybe a little bit from the, all the rejection and then started getting getting in your head? Like, why do you think you started messing up the auditions? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Well, some some of them were good, but maybe they just wanted a different person or something. But now I just, I don't get auditions. Um, but uh, I don't really mind because I like making my own videos and stuff and like even made my own documentary before. It's kind of boring, the one I made. I, Ian's is really exciting and great uh, uh, and not boring. Uh <laughs> Are you but talking anyways, about the one about your Dax's Kickstarter? documentary is good. Yeah, you're talking it's, about the um, one about the Kickstarter? Yes, I made a Kickstarter for one. Uh, well, I made it for yeah, documentary with an invention thing. And yeah, I watched that. Out. Actually, I wanted to ask you about that. You made a documentary about an invention you made for an indoor garden. Mm-hmm. It was funded, and you made your doc. But the Kickstarter weirdly was for the documentary right not for the product yeah you were very specific yeah, so, about that yeah yeah is that because when you, you make a kickstarter you have to promise a product uh so i uh promised backers that i would give them a documentary and actually i said it's boring but i like it um but um but it is kind of slow um but i you have to promise to make something for them so i said i would make a documentary if they let me use a portion of the documentary budget to make my invention. Mm-hmm. Cause uh, that was like the first time I get money was like super tight for me. So I was trying to like figure out a way to like get rich quick essentially. <laughs> um, and so it's just kind of just like a scrambling shot in the dark. Uh, it's a great idea, which is why it's been made since then. And, uh, and it's similar to hydroponics, but it doesn't have a water Like it's not based on water or whatever. It's more like self-watering and stuff. And so I I think there's like now there's plenty of things made similarly to it. Um, And uh, ultimately, like who cares? Because then in the end, I got to make a documentary at the very least about it. Um, So (laughs) win-win. But then I had to get it. I had to worry about money still for a little while. Now you, you posted online that somebody had stolen your invention and it was in stores. Um, yeah, yeah. Someone, someone emailed me that Macy's is selling the exact product, and I've seen it plenty of places since then. Like now, people keep sending it to me. Uh, do you, like do you think you versions. were the genesis for this concept? Do you think people stole? Uh, it from your I think it's easy to get caught up in your own head at times, especially if you're feeling stressed about other stuff. So I made that that video in this scrambling moment, uh, and then I just posted it, thinking I'll delete it later. Like I was about to go to work, uh, and then. Uh, so I think probably that, you know, two people in different parts of the world can have the exact same idea and start working it on the same time, mm-hmm. on it at the same time, or they could have even been working on it before me and I never knew it. So I think, I think, yeah, like at the time, like, oh, they stole my idea, whatever, but I, I don't, I, I don't think. Have you followed the success of any of those products? Do you think, I, I have a feeling that they're probably not getting rich off that idea. Yeah, but I think it does have a lot of potential. Like, I think it would be awesome, awesome, especially in a pandemic, to be able to pick your food out of your own house, like like if you're into vegetables. Um, um, but 
yeah, the, the problem I came up against is just the technology is so hard. But I think like everyone had so many doubts when I would go ask people's opinion, which is really helpful, but also like you have to kind of ignore them sometimes in order to mm-hmm. innovate. Do you have any other ideas that you want to put out there that people can steal right now? <laughs> uh, no. no. Well, I have some ideas, but I don't want them to be You don't so want to put them out there yet. <laughs> Hold on to those. Yeah. I, I had another idea that I started working on, uh, and that didn't really pan out, though it could eventually someday. But that's kind of similarly led to a book that I want to write. So, like, I don't know. Like, that's why I always just do it anyways, because you never know what can come out of it. Right. You ha- you have contemporaries on YouTube like Bo Burnham who has gone on to uh, I've met him before a few times mm. uh, to gone on to great success as you know. When you look to to someone like Bo Burnham, do you maybe how do you feel? Do you wonder maybe if you got left behind somehow, or do, are you envious in any way of of the success he's found? I mean, do, do like no, he's a- super talented. Uh, People like Charlie Booth, uh, uh, I feel less excited. Like, there's some people who aren't that talented um, that uh, I've never mind about the last thing, but like, who? like there wait, are wait, people wait. who, like, who did you got say? really famous. Charlie who? <laughs> uh, it's more like an inside joke of Ian. Uh, 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 well, I mean, it's one of those things. It's, it's in your book, so you can give it context. Yeah, I'm just, yeah so I, I just kind of hated on him for a second in my book. Uh, 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 what's his last name like, charlie well, what he's probably he's probably really talented really talented what? charlie Booth. but Booth. he used to send me hate messages on youtube so i wrote a i wrote a hate chapter <laughs> about him in my book because oh. i was like feeling really bitter at the time so kind of exactly what you were just describing it's like oh man this person got more famous than me but bill burnham um wait uh, who's charlie I, booth i'm sorry to interrupt you he, i just want to know who that is he's a very handsome young man who's a singer and oh like, here he is does songs with megan trainer and wiz khalifa and um, what kind of messages would he send you like your, your your voice sucks. Your singing sucks. Why would he say um, that? Just to be just to be cruel? Well, he was. I think he's probably around the same age as Dax at the yeah, time. Yeah, uh, um, yeah. The only reason I even like remembered remembered it is because he had a strange last name. So years later, whenever I saw that name again, I was like, Oh my god, oh, why is Puth. that person? That's why I couldn't figure it out. Poof. Yeah, but he's actually very talented. I have nothing against him, and I regret <laughs> writing that chapter. Has I'm he sorry. ever apologized um, to you? No, he doesn't. He, he probably doesn't. He's probably not remember. Well, hold on, Charlie Puth. I think we have a beef to settle here. <laughs> but Bo Burnham's super talented. And, uh, Would you and like an apology from who, Charlie Puth? What? Would you like an apology from Charlie Puth? Yeah, I would take it. But I'm also kind of harassing him probably right now. But also, maybe he should. Maybe, maybe he should. Yeah, okay. I think this is good. I mean, Charlie Puth, I think, needs to reckon with his past. Yeah, Charlie Puth was a uh, a young YouTuber at the time. I think he made uh, like outro music for Shane Dawson and some other YouTubers at the time. Um, so he's been around for a while, and I think during that time he was just very young and uh, didn't appre- appreciate Dax's vocals. Yeah, because I suck at singing, and and it's probably annoying if you're really talented and working hard at something, and someone who sucks is getting more attention. Uh, uh, but the, at the time I wasn't like I, I I was trying to sing like good, but I just sucked. <laughs> sure, but he doesn't um, need to go out of his way to uh, to be. No, rude. yeah, it doesn't necessarily justify being a hater, but also like when someone's just fifteen, kids, like what? Yeah. Um, but what if people went and told him his music, his voice sucks? Would you be okay with that? No, let's let's. This is a good chance for me to set an example for people. <laughs> so I forgive him. Uh, uh, <laughs> I love your. Mu- I don't know his music really, but I'm sure it's great. And his voice does sound good in that song. See you again. Uh, uh, very good falsetto. Um, um, and I also can't get mad that he's more popular than me because I quit making videos at a certain point. Sure, so yeah. that's like my problem. Well. Um... I've really enjoyed spending time with with both of you. Dax, I'm really happy that... um, I feel like a lot of people are going to... are going to be checking... You know, a lot of people are going to be checking checking in on you. 
And I think a lot of people are going to like what they see. They're going to find an interesting man with a lot of interesting insights, a talented author whose books are on Amazon right now, have good reviews on Amazon too. Obviously, we haven't had time to read them. We haven't got them yet. But I noticed Ice Cream Man has got all five stars across the board. So clearly you have a knack for, for literature. And um, Thank you. well, it's been a joy. It's been a pleasure. I've enjoyed having you both on. Ian's documentary is obviously up now. Ice Cream Man, no the. And we have with us ice, the Ice Cream Man. Uh, <laughs> no longer. Dax Flame. No longer the ice cream. No, he's he's forever the ice cream man. I mean, <laughs> immortalized in in uh, literature. Like Batman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ice right. cream man. Sounds um, better than the unemployment man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's on Amazon. So how's the how's the rate when someone buys that book? Do you get most of the money? I sell it for eight dollars and I get two dollars and thirty five cents on that one. I always, I sell my other book for ten dollars. Uh, and I get three dollars and fifty cents or something like that, and I'll sell my next book for eight dollars. Also, um, mm. print on demand, so it's good. Yeah, mm. I, I bet it will sell. Who's making all the money? Now. You only get two exciting. bucks. Well, it's print on demand, so oh. you don't need to. Yeah, have it's also yeah, on Amazon, which is a bit of a racket. That's. Uh, uh, I would assume you yeah. make more than that per per book. But the books, the books are very awesome. I've, I don't read a lot of books uh, <laughs> and I've read both of them to completion. They are <laughs> very funny. That's Thank very you. cool. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. I have a feeling you have a knack as a, as an author. My, my, my hunch is that you could be a very successful author. And That'd I think you cool. should, you should keep pursuing that. That's my hunch anyway, for whatever it's worth. Thank you. Thank you. But man, you're going to have to sell a lot of fucking books at $2 a pop. Uh, <laughs> if you want uh, um, more than $2 a pop to go to Dax, we do have a sabotage t-shirt that we are splitting the revenue with Dax. That's awesome. On. That's right. great. Um, yeah, that's great. So yeah, just better margins for everyone on that. Yeah, I'm going to buy a couple of those. I'm going to buy one for the whole crew after this. Mm-hmm. I should have, I should, well, I couldn't have had one for them to all share or one for each of them. Yeah, oh, well, we would, we would rotate. Shirt. Yeah, we would rotate <laughs> every podcast. Um, well, I just want to say again that I really loved the documentary, and I love that you're going in this direction, Ian. Yeah, love to see it. It's really great. Can't and... do it without people like Dax and yeah. all the other YouTubers who you know pitched in. Yeah. Oh, and uh, shout out to uh, Brett Benowitz. Um, he's he was the uh, the other participant in Smoothie Game, uh, Smoothie Madness. Oh, right, he was a great uh, sport, eh? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> him and Letitia were awesome. It was super surprising. Brett was like the only nice person on Hollywood Boulevard. I know, I noticed that. <laughs> that was something, huh? <laughs> yeah, he he gave us the time of day. He would have kept talking to us for longer, but he had some place he get, had to be and uh yeah he's making music he's acting he's he's cool so uh you know if you follow him on social media or anything just be respectful and know that he's you know he does a lot of other stuff okay fantastic well dax i wish you well i look forward to what's next from you and ian the same goes for you thank you guys both for joining us this has been the h3 podcast experience transcendental experience um Joe Rogan's show is frankly not that good. <laughs> if, his, if his is an experience, then mine is a is a, another dimension of being. I mean, uh, there's no other way to compare them. Are you people fam- are comparing? People always compare us. They say, "Oh, I wonder, which, I wonder which show's better." <laughs> but hey, I'm here to give say, you a, a, you know an extra thousand episodes, uh, <laughs> and and I think you'll overtake him. You heard it here, folks. <laughs> Damn, I appreciate. Yeah, he's up to like fifteen hundred apps. So we, that, yeah. he has more experience than us. If his show's better, it's just it's only for that. <laughs> uh, I think I'm more talented. Uh, anyway, guys, thank you all for watching. And what was his name? Charlie Poof. Yes, we forgive him. All right. <laughs> thank you, everybody. That's a wrap. All right. You better watch out. You better watch out. Who are I- Fucking ass, we got this to me. Yeah.